Hey, Mayor. Just uh, welcome everybody back from the 4th of July holiday and hope everyone had um, at least some restful time with their uh, friends and family and getting out. And so, Mr. Mayor, I'll turn it over to you. You have some presentations this evening. Thank you. Always the funnest part of the job to thank the people that work so hard in our community or that have set uh, records. Uh, first, I'd like to start out with Judy Oldinger. Judy, would you join me up here? Judy has been a member of our planning department. That is one of the most tightest departments that uh, we can do because sometimes you have to vote on properties that are right next to you and it's kind of hard to say hey i'm gonna i'm just not going to have a decision on this one it's tough but it's it's a tough position it means a lot to a lot of people and julie and uh, judy has covered this position for eight years mm -hmm. i think it's a record uh no it's pretty darn good but judy oldinger from the town of mount airy in recognition of your devoted, hardworking, and selfless service as a planning commission member, the time and effort that you have given to the town is greatly appreciated. It is volunteers like you that make Mount Airy what it is today. Thank you so Thank much. You. If you'd like to say a word. Thank you. <laughs> But truly, Mount Airy is something else, and I'm so glad that I was got, got to be part of the last uh, master plan, and I wish the new planning commission the best of luck with this new uh, master plan because it's a lot of work. So great job. Thank you so much for letting me have the opportunity. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Pat. As she laughs at you guys, so she knows that you're going to go work into it. Now, now we're moving into a different arena. We're moving to the sporting arena. We have somebody special from our town. We've had professional football players, basketball players, professional mayors. We, we've had a lot of professional people come out of Mount Airy, right? Well, I'm going to read this about a, uh, may I ask Jacob Ferentz? How do I pronounce that last name? Ferentz. Ferentz. Jace, can I ask you to join me? You're not wearing a baseball bat or anything. Yeah. You've all sung for me. Well, national championship. All right, everybody got to remember that. That's a national championship. Absolutely. My daughter, my daughter went to Salisbury. What well, Jacob has done some remarkable things. Whereas the Salisbury University Seagulls baseball team has not been to the College World Series in 20 years. Whereas they qualified this year and defeated Minnesota's St. Thomas team and became the 2021 NCAA Division III College World Championship National Champions. And whereas Mount Airy's own Jacob Farns, correct me if I get wrong, was the starting catcher and played, that's a tough position, catcher. Mm -hmm. Was the starting catcher and played a promote role in capturing the title both defensively and offensively. And whereas Jacob is currently a sophomore, whoa, Thought you graduate. Was born and raised in Mount Airy and in 2012 graduate of Ligonor High School, where he played four years on the varsity squad. Now, therefore, I, Patrick T. Rockenberg, Mayor of Mount Airy, do hereby recognize, congratulate Jacob Ferentz along with the teammates of the NCAA champion Salisbury University Seagulls on his and their noticeable accomplishment signed at town hall and also supported by every member of town staff because y'all had a jacob congratulations thank you so much <laughs> would, you like, would you like to say some words um, i'll keep it short and sweet uh, wouldn't have chose to grow up anywhere else probably the best town i know around in maryland and you know glad i could bring home some hardware for the town all right so, somebody slid him a 20. Somebody serve him a 20 when he gets to his seat. We're not being recorded, are we? Oh, okay. okay. Now, this, I saved this for last because I got to tell you, throughout all the years and all the disagreements and some agreements, I have never worked with somebody with such a better attitude. It's almost like, I mean, this is country. This is Mount Airy. And uh, Mike has been fantastic. And so I saved his for last. In recognition, Mike Van Sant, would you care to stand? 
that's something professional didn't people have do. To go. Yeah. Well, no, you didn't, and we, we made up for that. The recognition of your devoted hard work and selfless service as an Economic Development Commission member, your working knowledge of the town issues and great input <clears throat> to help resolve them have been greatly appreciated and it's volunteers like you that make Mount Airy what it is today. And that's a true statement. We don't get this way without your Lingletti's, your Pam Reed's, and some of your people back here, Steve's, but before they, they're volunteers before they run for office. Jason, I don't know what you were. You were, you were, very, you were very young in school, I think, before you became president. But on a very proud town, you've always made it fun, and we're gonna miss you. We hope we can still call on you. Oh, yeah. For advice. Yeah. Would you like to say something to the town? Well, I just, uh, I'd like to appreciate the mayor and all the previous mayors and councils who, you know, confirmed me to sit on this commission. Um, I feel very comfortable leaving it. It's in great, it's in great hands now. Uh, good, good leadership. And uh, if, if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to be excused to do something longer than I've actually sat on this board, which is go watch the home run derby. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Appreciate those presentations. Um, we don't have uh, any scheduled speakers this evening, so we'll move into the approval of the council meeting minutes and close minutes, and I will um, make a motion. Is there a second? I'd second. Councilman DeMoter seconds. Um, does anyone have any corrections or saw anything that um, was not correct. Not hearing any. Hi, Jason. Oh, sorry. One thing I asked you about where under the police chief report, I think it was um, Kurt who gave that report. Does that need to be corrected okay. too? Yep. Why don't I know Kurt's last name right now? Snyder. Thank you. So we'll just change reach to Snyder, please. What's uh, Lieutenant Sergeant? Lieutenant. All right. Perfect. Lieutenant. And then I did have another thing on page two under 11 mayor and council reports. We yes. just need to correct council member read beautification goes under me. That is, that is so that. Can we move that yep. under council member Galetti? So we'll just move the commission of beautification to streets and roads commission with councilwoman uh, Galetti. That's it. All right. Perfect. All right, with those amendments, um, all in favor of passing the minutes, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, minutes will pass. Chief Reitz, welcome back. And we'll go to your report, sir. Uh, good evening, everybody. Chief Reitz with the Mount Airy Police Department monthly report for the month of June. Um, meetings and trainings attended. Uh, Corporal Geneva is preparing the department for their annual firearms qualifications and use of force training. Uh, also, the officers continue their monthly uh, regiment of training in the Police One Academy, which they use for their 18 hours of in-service training, which is required by the Maryland Police Training Commission uh, annually to m maintain their certifications. Um, other than that, there's nothing else to report for meetings and trainings. Uh, community outreach, uh, the Police Department did, uh, did uh, was assigned to the Fort County Lions Club uh, Carnival detail uh, for the week of June 7th. And there was nothing to report uh, from that. Uh, everything went well. Uh, the officers also uh, managed the uh, July 4th uh, celebration uh, with the assistance of the Carroll County Sheriff's Office. Uh, the operation focused on traffic and pedestrian safety as well as enforcement support law enforcement support with the, uh, with the organizers of the event who also had private security on the scene. Apparently everything went smoothly. There's nothing to report as a result of that as well. Uh, during the month of June, we handled 854 calls for service. This is a decrease from the May, which they had uh, 1,340 calls for service, and this month was 854. And it was an increase from overall last year, last June, slight increase in calls. Um, one significant case we did have uh, was a destruction.
construction of property at the uh, Summit Ridge soccer field uh, where we received a report uh, on June 13th of three pickup trucks tearing up the uh, property. Uh, we were able to, through our investigation, determine the parties and they have been charged and charges are pending against them. So that case will be closed by an arrest. Uh, during the month, we had six part one offenses and they included uh, six larcenies. Uh, this is an uh, increase from May, 14% increase from May overall, and uh, or I'm sorry, a decrease from May, and an increase from last June. Uh, as far as Part 2 offenses, we handled 21 uh, Part 2 offenses, um, which is a slight decrease from May and an increase from last June. So uh, I'm proud to report this month that there was no opioid-related overdoses in town. Uh, as far as your enforcement activity, the department um, conducted 107 traffic stops during the month of June. We issued 38, <laughs> excuse me, 38 traffic citations, um, 92 traffic warnings, uh, 25 repair orders, made two DUI arrests, and five other traffic arrests, which include driving while suspended or uninsured and so forth. Um, and then on the criminal side of enforcement, we made uh, 10 criminal arrests during the month, and we handled 79 investigative reports. And that will be the police department's report. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, Was it? Chief, I do. Uh, Council member Steve Demetra brought up having like a, uh, uh, a committee, uh, not not a committee, but uh, what do we call it again? Well, I had brought up the idea of, of at least once a year having um, extended time at a town council meeting where you could share you know, in more than just the three minute update, you could give a longer um, presentation of what the police department's done, what kinds of issues are coming up, what kind of threats or issues on the horizon might be coming up. It's an opportunity for the public to hear all that and to provide some comments and ask questions. So it's just an opportunity for a deeper dive, a more, more rich conversation about What's the police department doing for Mount Airy? And if citizens have questions, they can ask questions. Um, that type of a, of, a, of a session. And then I think the mayor might, I mean, the mayor can speak for what he's thinking about, but I think perhaps it's looking more at maybe reviewing certain aspects of um, the police department and where it's going or something like that. More but tra I'll, transitional I'll, committee yeah. held more frequently and uh, maybe uh, maybe quarterly, and you'd have somebody on it besides me who will frequently come to your budget and say, "Why do you need that?" Well, I don't have the background for that, but uh, John Stumeyer, who you work with, does. Steve has some very good details, so I figure you three can get together. We can work on these and we can justify what we need. Lynn Gletti would also like to be part of this. And knowing Lynn's background and Lynn's uh, legal background, I think it'd be a nice team that we meet quarterly and to say, and you can come to him, Chief, and say, you know, I need that gold card. And if you can get them to believe it, you got it. You can't do it with you now. But right. I'm, I'm certainly not opposed to that. And a lot of Towns and municipalities sometimes have what they call a police advisory board. Yeah. Um, so that's something, some of that has gone to the wayside, but I'm certainly not opposed to it. I think it would be an excellent idea. So to that's something we'll be setting up with Lynn and uh, Steve and the John. And you all will take it, work on it. Uh, the big public meeting, we'll have to work on that because we're having a council meeting and not a police meeting. So we can work right. on details and put a limit on that one. But your meeting would be held elsewhere and uh, most of the time in private. I'll check with Tom to make sure of the public need, but it's more of a task force. It's going to be a police task force. So I'll, I'll get with Tom. I just wanted to make a comment because I did start discussing this with the chief about six months ago, having sort of a liaison from the council and having exactly what you're talking about, where we could do community outreach, community education, and exactly what Steve's talking about, get all that information, discuss it, talk about it, get out in the community like we've done, and give the community more of an opportunity to speak to the chief or to speak to people to find out exactly what Steve's talking about. What do they do? What's coming up? A lot of people make comments to me that why do we need the police? 
we don't have crime. Well, that's why we don't have crime. So I think a lot of, we've talked about education and um, kind of an outreach. I think that's would tie in exactly with what it's Steve's talking idea. about. It's an excellent idea, but we're gonna make sure the time meeting is right. And we wanna have an hour meeting during the town council. And when we have our task force, we'll get together and do it right. We won't have a liaison, because the mayor has always been the liaison for the police department. He's the head of the police department. But uh, I'm gonna defer to these people who have much more knowledge than I do for final decisions to the town council. Thank you, Chief, for accepting. So the only thing I would suggest is a meeting like that would be a separate meeting outside of town council. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we cover a lot of material at the town council table. Um, so that, that would be my only suggestion. Mm -hmm. yeah, we'll, we'll bring it up. Somebody will do a summary. You know, we met with the chief. He needs a new car. He doesn't need a new car. He needs this. And, and what people like Steve and John and Linda saying, you know what? Yay does it. Yes, sir. Does anyone have any further questions or comments? I, I have a couple questions. Hello, Chief. How are you? Good evening, sir. <laughs> I'm looking forward to get to know you better. Um, Couple questions. So I'm looking at the traffic warnings and citations and the total traffic stops, and you have the total number. Is there a way to get information about where exactly those citations occurred? Do you, I mean, can we look at that information? Um, that is part of the ETIC system that will give you a location. Okay. Um, but that also gives you a lot of personal information as well. Uh, that would have to be filtered out and so forth. Yeah. Um, because we don't want to give out. Understand. Personal information on people I just that saw our lawyer's eyes so raised. So yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just interested in better understanding where some of these incidents are occurring, in particular regarding um, safety in streets, um, safety on Main Street. Um, you you have some system in terms of where you patrol and why you patrol where you patrol, and I don't understand any of that. But I'd like to understand. Where specifically are we giving people, you know, speeding citations and warnings and that kind of thing? Because that should hopefully be correlating with where we think we're having those kinds of issues in the community, where our citizens have told us we think we have a traffic safety concern in this area or that area. So I'm looking for where, where are these incidents occurring? Do they line up with where we think we're having problems, that kind of thing. So Is any that something you two can talk about? Yeah, your... certainly we could talk about that. Okay. Uh, keep in mind, usually when they see a marked police car sit in the area, they don't speed as frequently. Understand. That's why we want more marked. And we do a lot of work with the, with the Department of Public Works, and yeah. they have the radar signs that we that's placed out, and we get a, we gather a lot of speed data from that. Right. Um, so a okay. lot of times we'll deploy them before we sit into an area to determine if there's a problem or if it's just the issue of having an infrequent speeder in a certain location. Right. Um, there's certain factors that we look at. Uh, you could very well have so many traffic stops and they'd be at 100 different loca 100 mm -hmm. traffic stops in 100 different locations, depending on where the officers are at that point in time because we have moving radar in our vehicles. Yeah. Yeah, so whenever we're patrolling and they're using that radar system, it's always active and it could be all over town. Yeah. Okay. So, well, I, I look forward to following up with Absolutely. you offline, but thank you. No problem. Could I just make a comment just because um, I know Steve's going to come to Streets and Roads to learn what we do to point out that it ties in with Streets and Roads. The um, machines you're talking about, the speed and traffic studies, the staff does put out and we populate the data and we give it to the chief and give him areas of concern. He'll look at it and see what are areas of concern, what are high speeding areas, and we do have those. So we filter all that through Streets and Roads. And I'll, I'll get into more detail when I get to my report, but that's something we do um, with the spreadsheet. And he holds the data in his office, but he does then go into detail. Like, for example, we had somebody going up the hill on Main Street going 80. So he can look at that data and look at the time and look at, you know, we've kind of worked on that the last three years of where to concentrate. Mm -hmm. It's not so much a thing where we'll say, 
they're going to start doing radar on South Main Street because then people are going to, you know, it's just like he said, when they see the machine. Any other questions or comments? Thank you, Chief. Appreciate all your time and service. Thank you. We'll move on to the Mount Airy Volunteer Fire Company report. And Bruce Walls is here this evening to give that report. Like a pro. Good evening. The incident report for the month of June, rescue calls, we had 102 in Carroll, 64 in Frederick, eight in Howard, four in Montgomery for a total of 178 rescue or EMS calls. Fire calls, 17 in Carroll, four in Frederick, three in Howard, six in Montgomery for a total of 30, which resulted in 119 calls for service in Carroll County, 68 in Frederick, 11 in Howard, 10 in Montgomery for 208 incidences uh, last month. We have a number of activities coming up uh, this month. We have uh, sort of in lieu of the carnival, we have the taste of the MAVFC, which will be held on the 23rd and then the 28th, 29th, and 30th uh, at the carnival grounds. Uh, from 5 to 9 p.m. And I want to point out and make sure that you understand that that is Friday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. There's no Saturday for that event. Uh, but we will have uh, numerous foods available uh, that you would typically find at the carnival. And so we hope everyone will come up uh, and support us with that activity. The next uh, barbecue chicken drive through will be on the 1st of August. And we're happy to report now related to all our events that we're able to take credit cards at most of those events. We would prefer cash because we don't want to have to pay the transaction fee, but it's just become people are so used to using plastic that we finally have decided to uh, make that available. And if you really want to save up and, and diet and get ready, Starting in September, the Big Country Breakfast will be back uh, on the third Sunday of every month. And so we're looking forward to offering that again. Any questions? All right, stay hungry. <laughs> Thank you, Bruce. Look forward to that country breakfast. Hello. Where your chicken is people All right. We will um, move into community concerns, citizen comments. And I know Mr. Bill Butts, you would like a few minutes. So welcome to the podium. And then anyone else uh, can follow Bill. Thanks so much. There we go. Last several years, uh, the mayor and I and, and some other leaders in the community have kicked around the idea of does it make sense perhaps to expand the number of commissions or the number of groups? Um, one of the things that uh, is especially at the top of that list is the possibility of a Mount Airy Seniors Commission. Did all of you receive the, the email that I sent you with, with some background, okay? There are a group of, of four of us, uh, Roxanne and I are, are both on the Planning Commission, Diane Linton is Mount Airy's uh, representative on the uh, Carroll County Bureau of Aging, okay? And we've also got Mr. Wayne Evans, who is involved in so darn many things in this town and has been for so, so long that uh, it, it makes sense that uh, we reached out to, to Wayne as well. The four of us are doing some due diligence. We're reaching out to other communities. Uh, in primarily in Maryland, and maybe also we'll, we'll go beyond that. If they have something similar to a seniors commission, or they have a coordination of resources and services that um, that might be worthwhile for us to, to look at and see what what it would take for us. Um, we grew from about 9,300 to 9,500 as a town between 2000. 2010 and 2020. Um, we have about 12 to 12 and a half percent of our population 
about 1,100, 1,150 that are 65 or 60 plus, rather. What's happening in Mount Airy is happening all across the U.S. In 10 years, by 2030, one of every five people in the U.S. will be 65 or older. Five years after that, by 2035, the number of adults older than 65 will be greater than the number of children under 18. Those percentages are exactly the trend that Mount Airy is on. The quantity of 60 and 65 year old plus that we have now already outstrip our capacity and our capability. The fact that we are located in the south of the counties, we straddle the county line, but um, we're kind of low on the pecking order for both Frederick and Carroll counties also exacerbates the issue that essential resources and services that are needed by our seniors are not always convenient. There are issues we need to be looking at. And that's why this group is doing some due diligence. And we'll be back um, next month at your meeting to share with you a bit in more detail, especially if we're identifying some communities out there that are doing some things we think might be worth taking a look at for Mount Airy. Okay. Thank you, Bill. And uh, council members, um, he will, he, he has a, uh, a left the spot for a formal presentation. Um, so that will be a little bit longer, but I asked him to come tonight to just give a, an, a brief overview of what you can expect in August. So um, I didn't want to have any questions. This will allow that commission to sort of get everything together for August. Um, and so questions and comments. Thank you, and uh, just a correction, uh, it's the Mount Airy Messenger, but we, we know what you're talking about. Gazette, that's okay. <laughs> no problem. Did any other citizens uh, or public comment at this time? Perfect. Uh, so we'll look forward to that presentation in August. Thank you, council members, and thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Bill Butts. All right, we'll move into ordinances and resolutions, and we'll begin with ordinance 2021-14, which is the budget amendment to reduce fiscal year 22 advertising budget by 12,000. Um, we had some discussion on this, some emails um, to give council members got caught up to date. This is coming out of three different light items um, to bring it to uh, 12,000, so those notes are there. I will make a motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. Councilwoman Reed seconds, and is there any further discussion that we need to have? Uh, yes, I have a, a few questions for clarification. So this ordinance also, it covers two things. It covers uh, reducing funding for certain items, and then it's moving money to certain items one of which is uh, item number two, park enhancements for a pop-up skate park. So um, I have two questions, just 
for confirmation. So we're reducing the budget um, for things like the messenger. And I reviewed the budget workshop advertising inquiry spreadsheet, which you sent following the last council meeting. And it looks like in FY19, there was about $2,138 budgeted for the messenger. In FY20, it was 5779. The proposal for 21 is 14,361. So just to remind me, we're bringing that 14,000 number down to what number? To make it consistent with FY19? So the, so what we, when we looked at this, the total amount of advertising right. that is going to all three newspapers, um, I believe totaled somewhere around 24,000. We are reducing all of, not just messenger, mm -hmm. but there, there has been deficits in all three to reduce okay. it back down to 12, where if you look at as a total of the three newspapers, it has steadily increased, but this year has sort of jumped and we know that COVID has sort of played a role in that. Um, the mayor has talked about um, getting word out about safety measures, as well as events and, and those types of things. not just two seniors either. Our COVID messages had to go across the board. You're correct. And so um, in looking at all of these amounts and trying to find a happy balance number for all of the three newspapers where we put advertising, whether it's planning, whether it's COVID, whether it's information to seniors, whether it's everything else that sort of comes along. Now, looking in the audience, there's only one newspaper here tonight, and that's been that way. But we have to advertise planning in a number of resources to make sure that we're following all those guidelines. Okay. And so all three have been reduced, not just, not just the messenger. Um, so it's hard for me to, that was a lot to, I say gotcha. I don't really know specifically what that number has been yeah. reduced down to, um, but all three that whole line item is going down to twelve thousand. Okay. We cut it in half. And I, great, Jason. Yeah. Another thing to bring up: if we did not have the messenger here tonight, we had a a, a, a a sports student. He would not be known. He would not be recognized. A lot of our small clubs would be known. We would not be recognized. So Frederick needs folks. It's not going to come down here to look at it. But Messenger will. So that's important. Okay. Thank you. All right. Oh, thank you for the clarification. I, sure. I think I got my answer and I'm looking at the full spreadsheet. I just wanted to make sure that we're providing a level of funding. COVID 2020 was a COVID year, it was a special year, but years before that, I want to make sure we're at least matching that funding. And I think we, we are. We are still above. above. Right. Yes, we are still above. I did not. What I wanted to do is in taking a look at where I can pull money yeah. from, I didn't want it to be left with nothing or even equal with a prior year. There is still an increase. Um, Messenger has raised rates. So we, um, we want to make sure that there's still plenty of funding there for everyone to still have the necessary advertising budget that is there. We can certainly discuss now um, line item number two that you had brought up since we have um, since the last town council meeting have gotten some extra information that they've sort of foregone pop any pop-up yep. pop skate park and is, is really just looking for a location. Yep. Um, you did sort of do a 50-50 kind of deal, which, well, I, you know. I, I, I expressed, <laughs> I expressed uh, the need for some cost sharing. Um, and, now, we can leave, we can leave yeah. that and just... And, and not necessarily, we can change the title instead of putting it for a pop-up skate park. We can still give, we can still um, ha have the 5,000 go towards the skate park. I don't, I don't really have a problem for that. They were looking for a pop-up skate park. That's, that's where we were sort of trying to match them on that. Um, I know that Sarah and um, that group have, have really led in donations. They've, they've created a 501c3. They, there's, they've gotten the ball rolling. Buddy uh, Nail was here to talk about also the, um, the improvements to the skate parks that he has done. So I think we have a lot, a lot of information. We can still leave the 5,000. We can change the, the pop-up skate park to just skate park. 
Yeah, that, that's where I was headed with item number two, which is things had changed. So we want to sure. clean that up and take out pop-up skate park. Um, is that an amendment that you would that, like that to? That would be, uh, there, there's two other areas. So let me let me get okay. them all out and then I'll make a formal amendment. Sure. The other one is, I, I do think it, I think it's helpful to um, always try and do cost sharing, not just say the town will provide X, but as the skate park team said, they're, they, they're willing to have skin in the game, they're raising money, et cetera. Sure. So I like the idea of saying in a cost sharing arrangement. And then the third area would be, do we want to put something in here that says, um, now this, this, may, this may be on town property now, but do we wanna see some sort of an implementation plan or a plan that says, you know, we propose putting a skate park component at X park in, in the town of Mount Airy. Um, here's the operational plan. Here's who might staff that. We're gonna staff that with volunteers. Is there gonna be a cost, et cetera? So do we want to see some, some plan that we get and approve that's part of providing these funds? Just hold on. So what's before us right now is a budget amendment. Mm -hmm. What you're asking for would be a separate document as they proceed through the process. Yes. And but, I, was just, I was just going to add on, we're putting this under the, the uh, Rex and Park board item at which gives them the control to release those funds when they feel like they're ready to release those funds. Um, so, uh, Mike and, and his board, mm -hmm. as soon as he starts to think, see things and, and the, the board as itself feels more comfortable saying, yeah, you guys look like you're ready to go. Here's the 5,000 that the council had, had, had put forth as a budget amendment to, to help you complete whatever it is that you're, that you're ready for. So we're, we're, uh, as a council, we're turning this 5,000 and putting it just under the park, the, the recs and parks Got board, it. just like everything else. We don't necessarily get a say in every time they want to spend money on something else, but that, that's not us. We're just, we're moving this to them. They have control of when they're ready to release that. And this is where we put faith in, in those hardworking commissions and members to say, yes, we're ready to now spend that, that the residents money, you know, on that area. Okay. Okay. I'd like to make an amendment. Yes, sir. To item number two in the ordinance, um, where it says a reduction will be reallocated to the general fund operating light item for park enhancements to be used in a cost sharing arrangement for a skate park. Can I just make a quick comment? Because my question had to do with number two. I think it's in line with what Steve is saying. Um, obviously, the pop-up part has to come out because they're not looking at pop-up. Mm -hmm. I'm almost, because we do, I want to confirm my notes from last month. We already have 5,000 somewhere for studies on the bike trail, right? 5,000 is already in there. Already in there. So I'm almost more comfortable saying for park enhancements, period, because then it's going to go to the parks board anyway. So... We're kind of designating it here. I do like the cost sharing thing. We've brought that up with them. Right. Um, and I, I believe in their presentation, which is a whole other conversation, they were talking about having it just free that people can use. So that's a whole other conversation sure. with the park. But I, I like Steve's idea. I'm just a little more comfortable just getting it to their line item for park enhancements. That way. And that's, what, that's what the title is for. It's just it, the title under the budget item is called park enhancements. Okay. So we could... I'm almost more comfortable if we mark that out because then if they don't need it, we've got it for the other park, for the, the bike trail park. Because Parks and Rec has a lot of stuff coming up the, down the pike, right? You guys have a lot of stuff you're looking at coming up. So I just wanted to add to what Steve had said. Okay. All right. So taking um, Steve, uh, Councilman DeMoter's uh, amendment for the cost sharing arrangement for the skate park and uh, Councilwoman uh, Galetti's uh, with just reinforcing that it goes to the skate park. Is that correct, ma'am? Um, no, no, just no, park enhancements. I just enhancements. wanted it to be for park enhancements and then that gives, like you said, the Parks Commission makes all the decisions 
they might come up and find out they need maybe a thousand more for the bike trail that they don't need for the skate park. So I'm almost more comfortable not having us designate it that we get it in their park enhancement budget and then they've got that to work with between the two new things coming up. Okay. How do you feel about that, Councilman Reed? I mean, this is your area. The mountain bike trail 5,000, is that specifically designated in the budget? Yes. yes. Yeah. So, right. And this is in the operating so Parks and Rec voted at the last meeting to release that funding for the initial design work of the mountain bike trail. So that money has already been voted to be released. Um, this would be separate. separate. And I actually would gr agree with Councilwoman Galetti um, that leaving it sort of general park enhancements um, gives the Parks Commission the freedom to sort of designate how, how much would go to either project. Because the way I understand it, the skate park, they are looking to self-fund. Um, they are fundraising heavily. I believe they are f applying for grants. Um, so they may not even need it. Okay. They say they fund it all themselves. Yes. Right. Okay. Um, so the new amendment, and feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, is we are essentially um, going, am I still include, uh, Councilwoman Galetti, am I still including the cost sharing before the park enhancements, or am I just putting a period after park enhancements? I, I almost... Um, I like the idea of park enhancements, period. Because, period. Okay. Uh, I and I do that. say in future okay. conversations, I like that idea, Councilman DeMoter, that that cost sharing as we get into further conversations. Yes. I like future. that. Yeah. yeah right I'm, now, I'm we're basically okay. doing a line item from the general fund for downtown revitalization to the general fund for park enhancements. So we don't need to designate that, right? We could just leave it for park enhancements. Right. Okay, perfect. So the new amendment on the floor is putting a period after park enhancement. So it's going to read, the general fund operating line item for downtown revitalization expenses will be reduced by 5,000 and the offsetting reduction will be reallocated to the general fund operating line item for park enhancements. And Councilman DeMoter already said that he would agree. Are there any other um, amendments that need to be posted before we vote. Just make a comment. Absolutely. I wasn't sure if this was a time. Now's the time. I mean, <laughs> I can understand the park enhancements. I just wish it would be dedicated to the skate park, but I can support the park enhancements as long as we just don't put it in the park enhancements and then next day or whatever, it's gone just in case the skate park people are depending on the 5,000 for it. So I would rather see if it's going to, if the 5,000 is put into the park enhancements, try and maybe set that aside somehow for it to be used at the last of the fiscal budget year cycle is the best way to describe it. For the Something. skate park. I, I think for, for the skate park, yeah. but, yeah, yeah. but, yeah. but after, say, like May or June, or April or May, it can just be open, open up for any general park, yeah. park enhancement. But I'm not sure if that if we can word it or just tell the parks board that. Yeah, I think when yeah. Councilwoman Reed goes back, you know, yeah. hey, there's going to be a five thousand dollars for the skate park. Just kind of heads up. Let's try to designate most of this if possible, and if we need yeah. some elsewhere. Yeah. Okay, I'm very good with that. Yeah. All right, um, let's go ahead and vote on this ordinance 2021-14 uh, with the amendment. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. 2021-14 uh, passes. Thank you, council members. All right. We will move now into ordinance 2021-15, which is the peddler exemptions. This is up for adoption. Um, and the only thing up for conversation, hopefully um, all the council members have the red, red line item. Um, which was a late addition to um, what I, I don't want to say test the uh, Councilman DeMoter with, but it was just to check on the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts to sort of figure out and um, doing a little bit of research into 501c3 organizations. I, I found very quickly that there's a private 501 and there's a, a public 501 and uh, private would just be like such as uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation sort of 
AVAS T21. Is that? I think you're, that is public. We're, we're, yes, we are a, we're a public 501c3. Like I, I would rather have public yeah. 501c3 organizations coming to my door, if any, and not the private side. And so I just added the word public. I hope, uh, you know, we'll see if anyone uh, has any comments on that. But I'll make a motion um, for uh, tonight. Is there a second? I'll second. Uh, I'm sorry. All right. We're changing peddlers. Peddlers is a big deal in town. There's a sign you all can get at the town hall that says no peddlers are allowed. So can you just reimburse what you were talking about? Yes, yes, sir. No problem. So um, essentially this ordinance now reads that if anyone has a sign such as that or any sign that says no solicitors, whether you a whether you are a public 501c3 or you are running for a political campaign. You are not allowed to go to their door. However, if they if they have that sign, you cannot go to a person's door in a political campaign that has no soliciting or that sign. Is that right? Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. If they don't have the sign, then all the public five hundred one c threes and uh, political political campaigning um, can go can go to those doors, but if they have a sign, you need to respond. You, you should get these signs and deliver them. To the That's uh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, I didn't read it. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. What are you saying? I'm sorry. Seventy nine seventy dash nine. Yeah. Is that up at the top, sir? No. Seventy dash eight. We have to change it. Okay. Okay, so that I'll have to look it up real quick, but that section that it's citing cites directly to a provision that talks about the no solicitation sign, which I believe is in and remains even with this amendment mm -hmm. in the same ordinance that that cites. However, if the idea is that you want public 501c3 organizations to abide by those signs, then you're going to need the same language you have in subsection B that is applicable to political campaigns. What you're saying basically here is that 501c3 organizations are completely exempt. They're not peddlers, okay, and therefore not um, subject to any of the provisions. Not only do they not are they not subject to the licensing provisions, but they're also not subject to the very next section, uh, yeah, 70-80, yeah. that would say you've got to abide by this sign. So if you want 501c3 organizations to abide, you make them partially exempt. You say they are exempt except from that provision that requires them to stay away when this sign's posted or they're on the list. And, yeah. and So that. we have that language on B towards the end with respect to no solicitation signs, should that language also be up for that? Yeah, I would yes. put okay. that right after organization. Yes, sir. Comma, except blah, blah, blah. Perfect. Jason, do we have to make changes to that file? No, he, uh, he uh, Tom said that he would check just to make sure, but he, I, I think, I don't want to speak on behalf of Tom, but he said that the, the sticker should be fine still. Y yes, um, uh, 70-15B. Can I ask you That's what it referenced for B on here, so I think we should be good. Okay. And I can pull it up too if you, if you want me to, real quick. Um, I have a comment actually on the actual red part that we're discussing. Can I just read the second? I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead okay. Councilmember Munder seconds. Go ahead. So, do you guys know what a 501c3 is? It's the actual IRS tax code section. It deals with a nonprofit. It's in Chapter 501, Subsection C, Subsection 3. So 501C3 is the actual code section of the IRS code that tells an organization it is a qualified nonprofit. So I'm I'm wondering the public versus private because I have an issue with the word public in here because it's a 501C3 and that's what it is. So it's the IRS doesn't designate public or private. It designates 
that nonprofit. So I don't know if the question has to be with us using the 501c3 designation, you know what I'm saying? Because I, I just, where, you found something that had to do with public versus private. Yes. So hold on, this is where my question comes in. Tom, and it's for you. I think once you become 501c3, you are public, correct? I, I don't know that. Well, well be, can I answer that? To, to be a 501c3, you have to file with the state of Maryland, so then you've become a public corporation or association to qualify under the qualifications for 501c3. So to answer your question, yes. Yeah. So I don't know that public is necessary. So that was my only question. Why do we have the word public in here? Because it should be any 501c3 organization. Obviously, if Bill Gates shows up at my door and he's a pri you know, he's a 501c3, I'm clearly not giving him money. I'm asking him for money. You know what I mean? This is kind of a common sense thing. But as far as just looking at the technicality of the legality of a 501c3, I question just that word public. It okay. should just be 501c3. OK. The, the sticker's fine. Thank gosh my sticker's fine. Mm -hmm. yell through the <laughs> All right. So um, are you making an amendment to remove the word public? Yeah, just to remove okay. the word public, because we've got 501c3 organization, and that co covers nonprofit okay. under the IRS code. I'm not going to uh, spend time searching. Yeah. As long as it allows the 501c's to, OK. Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, Avers, the skate park people, and everybody to go to. Okay. Yeah, I think, filed, the only... I think they've already filed a 501c3, and isn't the fire department a 501c3? So we're pretty much covering yep. the okay. ones we intend to that we've discussed. And I think the only other amendment is we just need to put, with respect to the no solicitation signs and or requests up um, after. after organizations that um, Tom just wanted to do to just to make sure that everyone abided by those stickers and signs. Um, so with those two amendments, does anyone else have any other questions or comments? I will quickly. <laughs> the, the, the two items that were discussed were exactly where I was going that, that we needed. My only question, I don't know that it's needed, but does everybody know what a 501c3 organization is? If you wanted to, under the definition section, you could put the definition of what that is. If you think it's not needed, then I'm fine with that as well. I personally, I personally don't think it's, it, it, it's needed. I mean, basically, it's a charitable organization. Right. Or, or not charitable. Non -profit. It's a nonprofit organization is okay. what I meant to say. Okay. Very good. All right. Thank you for all the uh, clarifications. Uh, we'll go ahead and vote on the... Uh, two amendments of uh, removing public and adding with respect to the no solicitation signs and requests up to letter A after organizations. Um, all in favor, uh, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. 2021-15 20, passes. Thank you, council members. Nope, you're fine. Perfect. All right. So we've gotten probably a couple drafts. Um, the, f the first one was a call that I had made um, earlier at the beginning of the week so that council members were able to at least take a look at 2021-18, which is in reference to small cell towers. Um, Tom later this afternoon sent out a revised copy of this draft that um, we'll uh, get ready to go through here tonight. Um, so I'll make a motion for introduction. Is there a second? Second. Council Member Munder seconds. All right, so. All right, I don't know what happened there. Um, I don't, we're not necessarily doing anything other than referring it to planning, um, but I do want to address any questions or comments from the council before sending this to the planning commission. Um, and the best way that I, th I thought we would just do page by page very quickly. So if you have any questions or comments um, in reference to those page numbers, instead of just giving everything to Stephen and then uh, Carl and myself, um, we'll just do this very quickly. So hopefully this doesn't take very long. Um, we are taking a look at the new draft that Tom sent out that was on your table. It only has three whereas on the front cover. The old one had five. 
I believe the public also has the new draft copy. Is that correct? Thank you, Holly. Appreciate it. All right. Um, so going through, uh, we'll, we'll start on page number two, two of 20, um, where we have the four where as is here. Does anyone have any um, questions or comments? If I do move too quickly, please yell at me. I have a quick question. Just a short answer is fine. What, what is the driver for this? Why, why do we think we need this now? I just, I just want it for a no problem. sense. Do you want to do you want to yeah. talk? Go for it. Yeah. So in uh, 2018, the FCC put out uh, a bulletin that basically uh, limited the ability of municipalities uh, from limiting or even prohibiting uh, the expansion of the 5G network uh, through various uh, zoning or other types of restrictions. Essentially the federal government's interest is to make uniform as best they can um, the requirements imposed by municipalities. The bottom line of that uh, FCC bulletin was that a municipality may impose certain regulations, read that to mean aesthetics, uh, things of that sort, but may not, and here's the legal buzzword, uh, materially inhibit these facilities within the municipal boundaries. Um, now, what all that means beyond those generalities, uh, one does not know. Uh, one suspects that you can probably lawfully limit where they go, as long as you, you allow them in places that will enhance their facility when it comes to their facilities, their coverage. Um, when the time comes, uh, you can impose reasonable uh, uh, aesthetic uh, requirements on them so that they blend nicely and don't look like some of what we've seen. Um, I don't name names. Um, uh, they also uh, impose certain regulations on uh, how much you can charge if they're being put on a town property. Uh, can't, you know, charge exorbitant amounts, obviously, exorbitant amounts, obviously. And they also shorten the time frames. When you say charge, are they charging us? Or no, no. What, what we would charge them to place their facilities within right of way. You can't, in other words, say, you know, I want, you know, a million dollars a day. That would materially inhibit their ability to um, expand their network. Sure. Um, certain, they call it the shot clocks. Uh, basically, a municipality can't take longer than 60 days in certain instances and other instances 90 days basically. So it's an attempt to make it uniform. I will say that uh, those were taken up to a couple of courts uh, who have on the federal level approved uh, the FCC's authority to impose these restrictions on municipalities. Why an ordinance and why now? Um, now is not necessarily a magic moment, but what, uh, what's critical is, is to set forth in advance of a, uh, 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 a provider coming to the town, what your requirements are going to be, so that you're not sort of imposing stuff on the back end. They come to you and now you're saying, you know, I want this, this, and this. You have put it out there either in policy or in ordinance. We did have a policy that was uh, probably not as specific as this, but which at least outlined what the procedure was. I think it's better practice to have it in ordinance form. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate that. And uh, John's uh, flipping through some of the uh, those small cell towers. Uh, two of them are from Ocean City. Uh, one was from Columbia, Maryland. Uh, that one there, that one's across from the Columbia Mall. So you can see how they integrate it into a lamppost with the uh, antenna at the top there. The box uh, is something that usually comes uh, with every tower. Um, so how that box looks in the environment, a lot of it you will see the restrictions and what the guidelines have to be uh, provided to whoever the, the 5G provider is. Um, and so that's from Ocean City. You can see that the, the bottom of the lamppost there has been sort of turned into a trash can. 
Um, but at the very bottom of that, there is the box there and the antennas at the top there. So you can see what a normal street light looks like um, there and then one with the antenna. So Ocean City has, has set out some of these guidelines to ensure that the aesthetics of these uh, small cell towers uh, fit within the within the um, the range or the or the neighborhood uh, per se, and and that's the reason for this. Um, these are generally put into high populated areas where cell phone service um, with a lot of users um, become uh, I'll use uh, lagged uh, per se, and so these are to enhance the uh, or, or prohibit that lagging from happening. And so not that we're, we're getting these anytime soon, but um, when I brought it up, um, uh, this was something that, that sort of needed to be brought back into check. It needs to be looked at. Yes. It's, it's been an ongoing issue since yes. 5, 5G yeah. came out. Yes, sir. Yeah. So. yeah. All right. Can I make a quick comment? Absolutely. Um, so I was at the um, master plan meeting the other day, and planning was talking about this chapter, right? They were talking about the towers, and it, it is an amenity that we need to, because if you look at anybody in town, connectivity isn't always great. They're up and down the hills, and we're in valleys, and what are we? We're up on the ridge or something. Pars Ridge. Pars Ridge. So I just want to point out to the public, this is kind of needed as an amenity to help with connectivity, especially with a lot of people working at home. So I just want to clarify, that's kind of why now and why are we looking at it? Right. And I don't want, I don't want anyone to, to think that we are discouraging it. This is, this is not for the reason for the conversation. This is just to make sure that we have items in place to help lead, right. lead that and make sure that the things control. that we do get... Right. The aesthetics they, and, and have it blend in, and just this is more of a way for us to control yep. what happens. Well, Perfect. And if we don't, then we're kind of if we do not have anything in place, then we're kind of stuck with what the right. company brings in. And right, thank you. This exactly. is this is what what we're putting putting in. Right. And we can't do any anything about we're it. We're being proactive so, instead yes. of reactive. Jason, Jason, Sir, yeah. Mike's got a question. I'm sorry. <laughs> So I think come on, come Yo. on. We got a microphone for you. Good evening, Doc. I think on, on another side of this is the level of competition for services that we currently have. We have no competition for high-speed internet in this town other than what's available through Comcast. No competition, no free market. Prices always go up. They never go down. Absolutely. And I think the future is just getting rid of cables in general. So. Well, and thank you for that comment, because that was talked about the other night in the master plan meeting that what are other options for, for internet in this town and looking into the, the, the options. Yep, awesome. All right, I did not hear any comments for page uh, two. Um, so we can move to page three. This is sort of going into the definitions of everything that is in this ordinance to, to clarify uh, language. Did anyone have anything on page three? Uh, I have a question. Yes. Go ahead. Um, is this ordinance patterned after other ordinances that would help us, I think, have a comfort level that this is kind of a, a standard of practice? It's some national standard, or whatever, and we're just basically adopting it and tweaking it. Is that the case? Yeah. So uh, this one is, I, I will be very frank, is modeled after the Manchester one that was just passed maybe uh, six months ago, maybe four Very months ago, something like town, that. Carol town. Very similar town. Uh, also has a great town attorney. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, uh, so we, you know, I, and as I may have mentioned in my email, I came on the back end. It was already sort of prepared. And so, uh, and I know that they modeled theirs after a number of others. I've also taken a look at Gaithersburg's. Um, as I sort of intimated in my email to you all, this is one approach. It's not the only approach. I could give you other options if you'd like to consider them. Um, you know, in general terms, I'd simply say that this gives a lot of discretion and power to the planet, their planning and zoning commission, as they call it there, um, as you can see. Um, and uh, basically, this on private property would be allowed 
if the planning commission agrees to it as accessory uses in our various zones which is what i was adding today to um but that's one approach other uh municipalities do it as special exceptions and so it's not the planning commission per se that's alone deciding this it's a, it's their board of appeals or zoning appeals in the first instance to grant a special exception and then you have this formal site plan you know process um, so this is not the only way to do it but this is modeled after manchester which itself was modeled after other similar ones a lot of municipalities this has been coming up at mml like 2017 2018 yeah. they had classes specifically on smell uh small mm -hmm. cell towers and so everyone sort of hopped on board and um, a lot of municipalities in coordination with MML sort of dr started drafting things. And, um, you know, I've, we sort of felt like the ordinance was like the best way to then send it to planning to, for these guidelines. And will planning please look at Doc's comment to see you know, how it impacts us, what changes we yeah. made. So it's important. Yep. Yeah. I'm good. Uh, are you uh, asking Steve? Or I don't know. He's in, he's in he's in deep thought over there. <laughs> Motor I, I, I will share my draft deep thoughts. Um, so, are there pros and cons to giving this totally to the planning commission? Do we get, do we get to approve something that the planning commission might recommend, or is this solely giving all the power for this to the planning commission? No, you will review afterwards. Yeah. Okay, we will. Yep. Is that correct, Mr. Yeah. Attorney? Well, which are you talking about? The ordinance itself or once you pass the Once ordinance? we pass the ordinance. Yeah, this says the Planning Commission is it. Whoa. And the other approaches may give more review by our town council? Uh, you could. Um, or could we even put town council review into this ordinance? You could. So those are, those are the things that pop into my deep thoughts. Yeah, I mean, deep is, again, there's a lot of options. <laughs> yeah. You could go or you could... Before yeah. you send this to the planning commission, workshop this amongst yourselves. Yeah, mm -hmm. you could workshop it after the planning commission comes back if you'd like. So it's really up to yeah, you all. How you want to proceed. Level, I think should have town council review. Yeah. I, I always I always like to look at the intended and unintended consequences of because it's unique. Something. It's not something we hit every time, like buildings, and roads, and houses. It's unique. Yeah. So, if I could, I would suggest sending this to the planning commission because that's our normal process and then when it comes back if we don't like what the planning commission comes back with then we have a workshop yeah i agree yeah just maybe something for the planning commission to keep in mind tom maybe i'm not sure maybe i just said so i got this at five o'clock so i wasn't able to really go over it quickly but it, just upon reading it here um, the one major concern is what would stop a cell phone company like the lamppost in town here particularly in the neighbor in the neighborhoods like mine sterling glen summit ridge uh nottingham are they owned by the town or the power company what would stop like a cell company saying oh well nottingham and sterling glen and summit ridge and any other community needs better 5g so we're just going to go in and replace every 15th Lamp post with the 5G tower. Does this give that authority to them? Well, and also on Main Street, which is a uh, state road uh, yeah. within state right of way. What what power do, do you as a town have to regulate that? My public statement will be absolutely you have the authority <laughs> and in in this uh, document. Um, yeah. But I will admit that that what I just said is a little untested. Yeah, I just don't want you know because you know, I. I, I know that there are several municipalities who put stuff into their ordinance knowing full well that if push came to shove and they got challenged on it, it's untested whether they prevail. But they put it in here because by and large, these companies aren't coming in to stick stuff down our throats. They're typically trying to work with us. Yeah. So. Yeah. I just, you, you know what I mean. I just don't want like some neighborhoods all of a sudden to wake up one day and have the, the cell tower. I like the idea. I can understand everything about it. I just want to make sure we're adding the proper protections also. So, John, you probably could answer this, or Barney. The 
the actual light poles, they're owned by the power companies, not us. We release them. Basically. Yeah. Okay. So and there's I nothing. I think they're in the right of way as well. So <laughs> and that falls back to the right of way question. Yeah. <laughs> Again, with the ones down Main Street, they're all owned by Potomac Edison, and then they're the state highway right of way. So the state highway p could potentially grant them access to those poles, and we wouldn't have a dime in the fight. And for that instance, for that instance, but maybe like in a community, would that be the town right away then? Again, it's still Potomac Edison's light and post. All the light posts. It's, yeah. in, it's in the right of way. So, you know. and any utilities in the right of way do have a we do have a utility request form that they come to us okay. and we approve those utilities. Any changes? So, if Comcast is putting a new line going across the street, we're we're, um, you know, having to approve those, okay. even the aerial um, um, yeah. utilities that come to us. So they may be able to put them in those locations. They would still have to follow. Questionable. <laughs> <laughs> the way the ordinance is written, yes. Thank you. Okay. They might not agree. Okay. Buy, All right. But they would have to buy, okay, as written, okay. All right. Um, Yep, no problem. I think with um, hearing Councilwoman's uh, read suggestion, um, I'm going to change procedure here and just uh, make a recommendation to send this over to planning. Um, if we have any further questions or comments, which I have a feeling we will, um, we will do a workshop uh, session at a later date when it comes back from planning. Um, Council members, are, are, you guys okay, are you guys okay with that? All right. Has it been formally introduced with a second? Yes, it has. Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry. I second. Okay. Yep. Yes. Okay, I'm the last one out on this one. No problem. Okay. No problem. <laughs> All right. So we'll uh, we'll just send this uh, over to planning uh, 2021 18. Thank you. All right. And thank you, Councilwoman Reed, for that suggestion. All right. If we could switch over to Flatiron now, we are going under unfinished business. Um, council members, I do have a schedule of public hearing, but um, I also visited uh, in collaboration with Barney, our town engineer, on Friday. I, th I think I sort of suckered him in because I couldn't get into the building. <laughs> and uh, within opening the door, luckily I had my mask on. Barney put his arm over, you know, I mean, was that mold? <laughs> Mold everywhere. Yeah. The smell of mold is every. Uh, John, there's no. Uh, other than we have a ton of stuff everywhere, you can just flip through. These are as of Friday, so you can't get any more updated than this. So these are just the second and third floors. Um, just showing the size, the actual size. If you've never been in this building, yeah, they actually look bigger, probably in this picture. <laughs> yeah, that is correct. I had my uh, my fish eye zoom on. Yeah. <laughs> this is the most important part. So this is where this is the the wall that faces park uh, as you go up uh, between um, the insurance building and the Flatiron building, and this is where a lot of the repairs have happened. Um, this is where you used to stick half your body into the concrete wall. Um, this was just a temporary um, patchwork. And as you can see, it's already starting to um, crumble down. Um, I was actually pulling off cement with my finger on that, on that picture. Sorry, it didn't come through clearly. And this is... Um, some of the water that has dripped down. Um, this is the outside corner that sort of faces deja vu um, by the window. And then the structural wall that is, um, as you can see, where Park Avenue is. Council President, there's also an official uh, engineering report. That is correct. Um, so council members got this um, at last month's. This is the official. This is a little old. Um, it's from 2012, um, and it is um, noted on here that it is just a visual inspection, nothing um, 
nothing we, specific. We have but other uh, inspections that went inside the wall earlier. Earlier than 2012, is there an inspection, or did we just it's remediate? There. All right, perfect. Um, and last month, uh, council members received the flat iron options. And as I mentioned, uh, Barney, I believe you added two other options that would be available for the flat iron. I don't mean to put you on a spot. Did you add this, uh, lose that lower level with all that bad stuff and turn the building to maintain the history and keep the building? There was. Um, I, I can't remember if I had it relocated. There was a there's an option nine that says move existing building east and south, restore no site upgrades. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Is that what you're referring to, yeah, sir? It okay. It's the building. It actually turns it. So if you're coming down park, and Barney does not take credit for this, but it wasn't my idea. Uh, so when cars come down now, they'll see like an entry, it'll be the Flatiron building and they can go through, we can put an elevator there and bathrooms because that's all it'll fit. But we will save an historic building and use the structure. So that's something I think we ought to consider. And I think that move that's on there is not putting it in the location that he's saying, it was just moving it back like 40 feet. Okay, all right. Can, can you write up what you and I talked about and send it to the council where we're turning the building to Black Park Street or lose in the basement. Yeah, we could. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, it's a shift. I don't know, fifty thousand, but it's still worth it. All the work upstairs, we can clear it out and make it a clean. Okay. Building. And we then it makes everybody happy. Okay. It makes everybody happy. There we go. <laughs> um, so uh, I just brought all of those options as well as pictures so that uh, all of the council members can actually see firsthand without trying to get mold inside your lungs and everything else. Um, so the purpose of tonight, the reason this is on the agenda is to schedule a public hearing. And the only purpose for this, even though I have been through this process personally, I don't think any other council member Munder, you have not sat through a public hearing with the flat iron, have you, sir? I think not recently, but I believe when the options several okay. years ago, I sat All right. through it. So. All right. I wasn't sure, and I thought it would. Um, I thought it would serve the council as best just to hear um, some of the public comments. Um, I would like for this uh, public hearing to be scheduled in September, with the uh, with the intention of making a decision in October. Uh, whatever that decision may be whether it's to save the building, whether it's to demo the building or come up with another idea. Um, uh, that, that would be the purpose of this. So September, uh, I would like to schedule a public hearing um, and probably dedicate 45 minutes uh, to this uh, public hearing, uh, meaning a 645 start in September. Checking calendars. Does anyone have a schedule in conflict now, what with that public hearing? Date is the September meeting, isn't it? A week later. That's going to be a week later. Thirteenth. Thirteenth. Yeah. You. That's what I thought. I just. I should be fine. Yep. So nine thirteen uh, public hearing start at six forty five, and that will give us plenty of time for advertising, and that will go uh, five minutes before. Um, our town council meeting so that we can have a five minute stretch break before we get into our duties. Can I make a comment? Absolutely. Um, I have been in public hearings as a public citizen. Um, anybody else out there that's been in those meetings, do we really, is 45 minutes enough? Because I think exactly, this is a hot topic. It's been discussed for many years and I've just concerned we're going to have a line out the door. 
So I, I just wondered if we could start it at 6.30. If we get done early, okay. we can take that break before we start our council meeting. Like if okay. we don't have, I would just rather have that buffer in there for the public to get in here. Sure. If, it, if 6.30 is convenient for everybody else on okay. the council. Just because I've been to them and they're pretty I'm, proud. I'm fine with 6.30 and the, and the intention for that public hearing, um, we are going to hear a lot of people that are in favor of one thing versus that are in favor of, an, uh, of another option. Um, many of them will have the same ideas. And so the intention is if you heard something that is similar to your idea, please just raise your hand and we'll take a tally count and go, okay, a lot of people ha had this same viewpoint um, and not to give, you know, we don't need to keep hearing the same thing over and over and over again. But if you are bringing new points, um, we would welcome those new points. I agree. Okay. It's great. It's great All right. Idea so we'll, uh, we'll change the 640 start time to 630. Great idea. Yeah. And if I'd we also like to suggest something we picked up at MML, if sure. we could have a sign in. Absolutely. And then you call the people up yes. and that keeps it moving as opposed Absolutely. to just if we would if we could do that. Perfect. I think people Perfect. have become more understanding of the situation, so I think that'll be helpful, but who knows? Thank you. Perfect. All right. So uh September uh thirteenth, uh we'll do a public hearing at six thirty. Okay. Fantastic. Uh Councilman Demoter. I think you have a question. You have a question in the audience. Doc. Doc, I'm sorry. So after sitting through a few of, of these flat iron building meetings over the years, you may want to have a contingency to postpone or continue it at another time, just to save face, uh, to allow everyone to be heard and stuff, because okay. they've gone on. I mean, and you alluded to it as well. It, it, we'll we'll have to have, have some guidelines in institutions, three minutes, come on up and... But, but I understand. They, they I were, understand. I, I understand. Gives everyone an opportunity. Sure. Thank you, sir. Um, all right. We'll move into. Um, Excuse me, Mr. President. Is this is this in re reference? It is. To okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, so, um, for this kind of a public meeting, let me just ask: Are we just listening to the audience, or do we? present the information on options or are we just totally in listening mode? We are in listening mode. Okay. Um, we are um, not asking questions. We're not asking comments about clarification of whatever it is that they're trying to tell us. Um, they get the, you know, we'll, we'll have uh, guidelines, but generally it's been three minutes. Gotcha. They will have three minutes at the microphone. We are just listening because if, everyone is saying that there will be a line out the door, then I do want to give everyone an option to talk. Um, I don't want to prevent anyone from, from not sharing their thoughts. Okay. And then a final question on sure. that. <clears throat> Barney, you had, you had a presentation put together, a set of slides that has a set of options with some costs. And I was wondering how old is that information or can we rely on that cost information to be relatively accurate at this point? Just keep in mind, those are very rough costs, um, but I did update the cost since it was originally put out, I don't know, eight years ago, something like that. Um, so I, I did, you know, take a stab at, you know, updating those costs. So they're, they're fairly good costs. Okay, thank you. And in, and in other words, Brian, the cost went up. Absolutely. All right. That's what Don't I needed. <laughs> heard that Thank once you. before. Don't be down. Right. All right. Thank you, guys. All right. Um, we will uh, continue with uh, town council priorities. Um, this actually has my name next to it, but it was uh, wanted to be brought back up by Councilman uh, Demoter. Uh, De and so I will let him go ahead and speak okay. on the council priorities. So, so we briefly touched on this at our last council meeting, and we really didn't get into, didn't give a good due diligence, I think, because it was towards the end of the meeting. Uh, my thought is that I think it would be very helpful for us as a council and to our citizens if, if we did have a set of priorities and it doesn't mean we're gonna act on every one. It doesn't mean we're gonna do them in a specific order, but it's, it shows our public that we, we know that we have a set of priorities. 
Further, I'll, I'll just throw out brainstorming. Um, to me, um, if we had such a list of priorities, to me that list should always be attached to our town council meeting agenda so everybody can see that at each meeting, hey, we have a list of priorities. And then I believe that we should have at least one of those priorities on our agenda. For example, now we're talking about the Flatiron Building. So that, to me, should be on the agenda from now, if that's going to be the first one we want to tackle, from now until when we reach closure on it. So that two things. Each meeting on our formal agenda, there's a priority that we're working on. And then as an attachment to the agenda, there's the list of priorities. So everybody can see what we're thinking about and what, our, what the important things are to our council and to our town. And a lot of that is a result of the survey? And the survey is certainly one source of input, but it was a major source of input. That was something that, yes, our town government said to the public, what do you want to see happen for our town? They told us, and I think they're expecting us to act on is those. Is that all from the survey, or who else decided to put their own? No. I, I did not yeah. I, I did not have any uh, personal benefit input I, I created this but it was not it was topics that have continued to be brought up uh, okay. through council questions when we're doing elections oh, that's important. Um, yeah. so ju just hearing a lot of these things yeah. um, we can put survey you know, make yeah and I and I did attach yes. just just for reference I did attach four or five pages from the survey right. that highlighted many of the things that are on the front. Yeah. Um, and it's, I, I do just want to call this council priorities. That This is not a list, and that's why it's more of a brainstorm or a web version, because I don't want the public to get um, to read into this quote-unquote list any more than, you know, things are just going to come up naturally and that's and that's fine i don't want to now say hey we need to focus all our attention bank buildings number two let's go tackle the bank building we're not that's not how this is going to operate it as things just naturally flow this is going to help guide us through that process yeah, we'll be doing four or five things at the same time. absolutely and this council is more than prepared to do that so and i i, I agree with that and i agree okay. with the comments that the 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 source of this should be input from the town survey, input from the 2007 survey, input from commissions, vision plan, you know, all, all the places where... Master plan, where, vision exactly. plan, so absolutely. That all, that all works. I do think that, I mean, I hear what you're saying. I think we ought to have, have these because just what everyone said, you know, we have 12 council meetings a year, so it's 12 times we get together. Um, operational things are going to come up every month that we have to focus on. And unless we have a list of more strategic, big picture things that we know we're supposed to work on, then we're going to lose those. And the public's going to say what they said to us in comments in the survey. They're going to say, you guys do all of these surveys, you write these plans, we don't see you moving on these things. So yeah. I, I think I've, I've I've beat that message, but I really think it's important. So I guess the next question would be, and I think at this point, we shouldn't really try and limit this. We should just try and get on this piece of paper all the priorities that people here think should at least be here as a starting point. We can take more time to whittle it down, to fine tune it, but let's at least get everything on here that everyone thinks maybe should be on here at the start. So what I, will, what I will do is, in the next couple of days, I can send this out as a working document between all of the council members. And um, Holly, if we can just, um, when we put under unfinished business, can we just put town council priorities? And uh, we can review that every month to see how everything is going. You added the mayor there, because he's got a little veto power going on. We can, we can add mayor and town council priorities. Is that what you want in your front? anything on my foot. I just want the title. No, no. <laughs> in front of mayor and town council priorities. Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. I'll, I'll be making comments as well. And no. I'll also have sure. a side vote on there so you don't exclude the mayor. Uh, n we would never want to and I, no, I, I apologize. No, Go ahead. I Absolutely. 
Um, so a lot of these priorities are already in the works, but they, they take time. Um, the one suggestion or change that I would suggest is we have Main Street businesses, um, but we actually need to focus on all of the town's businesses. So it should really state economic sustainability. Okay. Instead of Main sorry. Instead of Main, Main Street right. business on the list, yeah, okay. Focusing on all the businesses in Mount Airy, not Maybe. just Main Street. Perfect. Council President, great job on that. Thank you, sure. thank you, sir. So when I send this out, you will be able to just make those changes. Absolutely, that's awesome. Okay. Anything else? And then Are the last thing, and yeah. I brought this up at the last meeting. I, I believe that um, what's missing on here is, um, I call it Main Street safety. It was traffic safety on Main Street. Mm -hmm. and from the last survey, there were two of the items needing urgent action, immediate attention. One was, um, lack of commercial growth and improvements to the downtown district. The other one was traffic safety on Main Street. So I believe the traffic safety on Main Street, and again, I would title it Main Street safety, should be on the list. So yeah, if, I, I, I take concern with that. If, if it's I everywhere. Could, Park Street safety. Right, but, but, it, but a lot safety. of that depends on Center Street going through and the flat iron. So that, that topic will Change. hopefully be corrected or move forward as we address Center Street and yeah. as we address the Flatiron Building. It already has with sidewalks that right. have been improved by yeah. Can I make a comment because I would like to add to what Councilman DeMotor said. I agree with him, but I would like it to be overall safety because we don't even have safety on here as a priority and it yeah, should be it our overall safety it. because Main Street, yes, but there's some safety issues in some school zones. We've got some safety issues that hopefully we'll be discussing with the chief and our community yeah. outreach. I would like to see a section on safety and maybe a subsection of that main street, you know, the different yeah. things that we could come up with with our task force or whatever we're calling it. Perfect. So I'll send that out uh, this week and then council members will be able to um, make challenges on those. Uh, I didn't mean to say challenges, I meant changes. Sorry about that. All right, we will move into new business and the first thing on this is the town county agreement um, from the Carroll County government side and Tom I'll let you lead this please. It's an annual agreement between the town and the county. Uh, the agreement uh, reads the same except for the numbers as it has read for probably more than a decade now so there isn't much that has changed um, in terms of the verbiage, the provisions. Um, the only thing that has changed are the numbers as they do every year. Are these numbers going up or down? When you say numbers, are you talking budget or just calendars and dates and things of that nature? Yeah, the amounts of okay. uh, the, the town owes the county or the county owes the town. Uh, as that so going up. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, what the county. Sure. And this is coming from the county, and this is just for our review. So this is something that we cannot necessarily make changes to. Um, if there is something significant, you'll note something in there about South by 70. Uh, that was a change that the town initiated uh, when years ago we got a annexation petition or s from you know, all the residents South by 70. So if there's something major that you think. Um, I mean, the main purpose of this is, is to, to get what money's coming to you from the county. So you do have to prove it and get it signed yep. to get that. Uh, and, but there have been additions too over the years, the, uh, the stormwater management um, portion. Uh, you know, the MOU among the municipalities in the county is uh, not new, but it's probably about five years old now. So that, that's going on. There's been, there have been some amendments over the years. Okay. And this is just uh, this is just going to be up for approval, so um, we don't need to first or second. But it, I'll give anybody a chance to discuss anything. Just uh, just curi a curiosity point, Tom. The it says something about a one mile within one mile of the corporate limits. So okay. where did that magical one mile come up from? You know? There's no magic to that. Okay. That was um, uh, so. Uh, 
essentially it was an attempt to say, look, uh, at, at some range within the town, it becomes important to consult with the town. The county said yes. Uh, that radius, that same radius you'll see was used, for instance, for the south of I-70. Uh, so I don't think there's any magic to that one. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. All right. We are now moving to your document that says town council policies. Um, this was brought to my attention uh, from Holly, um, from former council president Peter um, that had developed some procedures and policies in place. You can see the policy and procedure, the date that it was adopted and the voting um, that occurred. Um, the reason I wanted to bring this up is because it's out there. Um, we need to be aware of it. Now, we have the power to also say we don't want to necessarily follow these policies. They don't really mean much to us or apply to us and we can get rid of these policies or if it's something that you like and should be followed with this with this council then we can certainly continue to adopt it um, so uh, this is nothing formal other than our own guidelines so if anyone has any questions or comments or want to start deleting or adding i'll start the council comments member Munder, go ahead looked over this is one of the documents unfortunately tonight i briefly read over sure on oh, the first one the town council members must be physically present at the council meetings uh the one that's adopted eight six twelve yes sir. should we try and update that to allow uh, virtual attendance for some reason by the council members since we've been doing that just to make sure it can continue like for some reason if sure. someone's on vacation sick or something else they have the option to attend Tom, virtually you when we denied that years ago with David Blaze now it seems I remember strange. the circumstance what I what happened was is that uh, he wanted he was out and he wanted to participate and did participate uh, by telephone or something by telephone. Uh, we, we thought yeah, it was his computer was there um, he expressed a desire to vote he was allowed to vote but what we all said is, is look if there's a one vote difference between passing something or not it's going to be subject to further review shall we say uh, fortunately all the votes in that meeting were all five to zero so you remember like more didn't than matter than whether his vote counted or not yeah. he never crossed the bridge i just know how devalued it was at that time and how valued it is now it works right and that's exactly right i mean the technology is so much better yeah. than it was then i mean he kept breaking up he wasn't True. If you recall. So, do we want to? Do we want to? Um, do we want to change this, or do you want to? I'm trying to think. eliminate. Um, we can say any council member that can partake in a council meeting has has the right to vote at a town council meeting. I would say yeah. Just get maybe Tom. Yes, to just right to vote. Some of the wording. Some so of the wording to allow you're, for if virtual. You're by phone call or by virtual right. the vote still so, counts so it actually could read physically present or present virtually yeah or okay whatever the proper legal right. legal legal ease for it is but there should be a limit we don't want somebody who's doing it all the time no no no, no, no. unless there's a reason if they're undergoing a sickness that mm -hmm. but there should be a limit you just can't say okay well, that's fine now that's how i'm going to mm -hmm. do it I would, I would say something maybe first check with as given permission by the council president or something of that nature or approved by the council president. I mean, I, I, will, I will say, I mean, I've been trying to come in early and council members are beating me in an hour before a meeting. So to say that people don't want to come into a, yeah. a meeting is, but uh, whatever the wording wants to be. Okay. Okay. Um, next would be an introduction with a second is required to a charter amendment. I, that's pretty basic, and um, we can. I would I would actually recommend that we delete it. We wouldn't be following procedures. I don't think at that point is that correct. Correct. I'm not sure. You, 
Okay. I'm not sure you need. I that. don't even know why that was there. Um, so this was this came up um, that election results are to be given uh, to the council, and the end. Maybe that should say at the end of the council meeting at which they are announced. The purpose is so a council member that did not win the election cannot vote in a different way due to being upset and he or she doesn't have to sit at uh, through the council meeting all upset. <laughs> Boo who? Well, it's true. We have somebody that lost and sitting at the meeting. So just the results are to be read at the end of the council meeting. That way, they're not read at the beginning, and then you're all upset, and you don't care about the town anymore. Yeah, I think we established that. <laughs> so can we just change it so that the election results are read at the end of the council meeting? I, okay. That's all that needs to be. Yeah, needs to be I agree okay. with that, but I'm not sure if this is the proper. <laughs> we need another procedure on this. It's been brought to my attention that it might be easier on staff and things to delay the council meeting till maybe that first Wednesday of the, when the election is held. So staff is not overwhelmed by trying to hold an election, the election results, prepare for the town council meeting that night. I'm just wondering if that would that makes make it a little sense, bit easier. Bruce has a question. Something of that nature. I think that's what the, the gist of what was mentioned to me. I might, I might not be getting it. I think this is actually in our charter, so we have to be careful. Bruce yeah. Walls, the uh, chair of the Board of Election Supervisors. We haven't had a chance to meet after the election because of conflicts, but we're trying to get that scheduled. <laughs> and uh, one of the things that we will be recommending is either that the election be moved or the council meeting be moved because in our experience, it's, it's too much to occur. It's not fair to the candidates. It's not fair to the staff. And we're left, we being the board, is left without any staff assistance because they are here. We're rushing, trying to get the results done. Everybody's waiting around. It's, it's a bad situation. So we will be bringing a recommendation okay. from the board to the uh, council uh, to make some change to eliminate that problem. So that may become a mute point. Okay. okay. Well, the and I, and I, I will just allude one more time that the, there is something in our charter about the election yeah. and when those get read and, and everything else. But We actually have, I think, a couple days to report if you read the election okay yeah. all right wow i'm good all right you know the election results to be given to Dan. whatever that's fine. so uh, let's just change it for now so that it says the election results yeah. will be read at the end of the council meeting until the um board of elections comes back with a new recommendation um yeah. the next thing refers to emails um so using your uh, council email for all town uh, town affairs. Um, it was noted on here um, that the mayor chooses uh, to use his own email address and that is up to him or her. Um, but I think, and, and this is uh, in reference to PIA requests um, because if, if a request is submitted, your entire inbox from your personal email is is sifted through before they find stuff. So I would rather change that and just make it'll just nobody is allowed to use their personal email for uh, town related. They shall use a town provided email for town business. It just makes sense. It protects everybody. It's easier to do PIAs. Just basically no. Town business shall be conducted via a personal email account. It must be conducted through a town account. Right now, I'll let Tom do it. It's all town council. The mayor is the only one. And well, that's what I reason, mean. The only reason I did it because I have three other emails well, from three other jobs. I don't need a fourth, but I'll let Tom speak. Uh, I would say all elected officials then. Well, but remember what you're talking about here. These are rules of the council. Okay. And I'm not sure this is the vehicle to impose that obligation. Okay. You may have other gotcha. proposal to do that. At so maybe on this, because they are only town council okay. policies, we we just remove uh, the mayor out of this. Yeah. He, he doesn't necessarily apply. Mr. Mayor, I don't mean any negativity towards that. I'm just saying that these are just town council policies. 
No, but I need to be copied because I do have a veto power and I am still involved in small legislative side. Yes, sir. You don't want to this was you. this was just in reference to we have to use our council email for since I yep. am semi retired, I may actually switch back. Can we get him a password? <laughs> that may have expired. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I've, I've already been able to lower the emails because we've done a redistribution. I'd like people to get a hold of the commission <laughs> members, the liaisons, and uh, other people okay. before they call me because I was the first call. That's not the best way to serve the community. Right. Thank you, sir. Um, so I guess maybe just leave this one alone until okay. we sort of figure things out. Gotcha. Um, and then the last one says, uh, policy used by council president Hell only on a town council evening where there is also a town election and one of the, uh, one or more of the candidates are existing council members or the mayor, the public hearing for the budget and town council meetings start after the polls close so the existing council slash mayor candidates can get to the meeting i think that's pretty understandable i think we're pretty flexible in that i don't know if we need to have a policy on that and that might change depending on what bruce and the Correct. election commission brings up so, so i would make is. i would make a recommendation just cross that one off okay that will absolutely all right, and behind that are just the policies um, in specific order. So we'll make those changes. We'll get you guys a new copy at the next council meeting uh, with the notes that were just said to, uh, this evening. All right, next up is the reimbursement for elected officials. Um, This is, uh, this is something that currently we don't, we don't really have for elected officials, uh, council or mayor, um, and uh, felt like needed to be established. Just make sure everybody's on the same page. There's a, there's a even playing field for everyone. Um, the only uh, thing that I will make to the actual uh, tuition assistance program is the last sentence uh, Charlene got a little worried and I just said it was just an example. Don't worry, we're not giving out money already. Um, but where it says funding for fiscal year 2020 is 1,000 per elected official. There's currently no set amount for 21 or set amount for 22. So just kind of keep that in mind. What's, so what's that amount that they can spend? It, it says a, it's a thousand dollars per elected official per class. Per class. I'm not I mean, so for, for, like if you're taking two classes and the total comes to $1,500, you get $1,000. Oh, so it's for classes? Yes, sir. Oh, cool. Um, and then below that are just some guidelines um, that I just sort of tweak to make sure that they are representative uh, of the elected officials, uh, the mayor and the council. Um, so you can apply to to receive tuition um, assistance, the guidelines just sort of help dictate um, when and how you get that, that money. So uh, number one, you must be a current elected official. Classes are, number two, classes are to be taken at an accredited college, university, business, or trade school, and classes must earn credible hours towards a degree or certificate. Number three, classes must relate to your current position with the town so you couldn't take you know like a cooking class unfortunately uh, number four all course related co costs are reimbursable including tuition textbooks and lab fees up to the annual allot allotment per employee mileage meals admission fees parking fees and any other administrative fees are not reimbursable Number five, tuition will be reimbursed after course completion. And number six, you must obtain a C grade or better in the class or have received a certificate of completion. So the only other thing would be to negate the last sentence in the first paragraph, which we can fill in with whatever information, but for the budget amendments.
Would anyone else have any questions or comments related thereto? Except for Steve. Anybody else? I'll just have a. Let me just say. Let me just say. I actually question. had no questions on this. <laughs> well, I'll take. It. <laughs> Hold on. Let me let Councilmember Munder go ahead. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Go ahead. I just have concerns with this. I mean, I get the. I get it. I'm a believer in education and all that. It just seems like we're giving ourselves a perk that we shouldn't really need or use at it, having the town citizens pay for our education. While I get it, I understand it. I understand that it's expensive. A lot of other businesses and things do it, but I'm just looking at this as a perk, which I'm having stomach. I would, the only, <laughs> the only comment that I would say would be that it's an investment in the town. If you are taking the correct classes, which, you know, I try, it's hard because you can't, you can't say, um, you know, so when I, when I put in there the wordings that they must relate to your current position of the town and you are putting, um, something as far as, um, I don't know, I'm yeah. just trying to think of an example, but like, uh, looking at budget and those types of things like yes that sort of has something to do with it but then you go as far stretch as looking at road maintenance that's not necessarily part of yeah like you're not looking at how to repair a road yeah you know what i'm saying like that might be a horrible example no, but, I know but like mean. i'm trying to stretch it to a point where that doesn't really have to if do it's with a class we don't take it could cost us if we're not up to date on what we're doing, it could cost us. I think a thousand is cheap, to be honest okay. with you. If somebody's going to dedicate, it's their uh, time, and I this would be one thousand, right? Yeah. Right, and it's and it's definitely not done away with. Right. I mean, no, I'm not doubting. It's just the aspect of it's like like voting ourselves a perk. I to, understand to do it. That's my only discomfort with this. Just like your perk of being here tonight instead of being home with your family. I wouldn't really classify. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, Kim. Just, just kidding. Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> At times, <laughs> I don't know. Some sometimes this is a better break break than the family. <laughs> this, <laughs> all right. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. I'm joking. So I I guess the the this allows this gives a, maybe a little bit of comfort for the residents to know that if we were to take a class that they would be investing in in what we would bring back to the table to make better decisions to be better educated yeah. about those those points of view Jason, or whatever it may love be it tonight because we've asked that each of us bring up three points that we learned at the mayor of municipal league some people may do it some may not i did so i'm going to bring up what i learned how the money was well spent and those fees were over a thousand dollars per council yeah. member so yeah. But I'm going to put it's in something, how, it's how, something it saved, how it saved us. Sure. Um, Holly? So I would just, in number four, change per employee to per elect official. Hold on. Wait a minute. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I did miss gotcha. that. I apologize. <laughs> I did base this. I did base this off of the employee one. And and got yours is much longer than this one, um, where I just wanted to... Uh, just asking because I'm wondering who determines for you what class, what class qualifies as relating to your position on the council or mayor. That's a great, I great question. Ever make that decision. I mean, if it's weird, somebody can question it and go after them. But. I guess when you go looking for money and uh, Char says, what's this qu cooking class for? <laughs> Char will get you. <laughs> I don't want to put any pressure on the town administrator, but is that something that you would feel comfortable questioning? Okay. So can we do a number seven? Yeah. For the town administrator to yeah. give approval. Approval. Subject. Yeah. Approve the course before you go and take yeah. it and then Subject find out you're not going to get reimbursed. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Subject to the approval of the town and administrator. Town administrator mayor is. and town administrator because he still falls underneath me and I'm not sure I want to know. Well, that. it's like the nitty gritty of if we're looking at this course and someone's looking at that course and he can look at it and say, oh, it doesn't really apply. Like say it's something with parks, you know, he knows what every person does on each yeah, commission. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to use the word and. 
mayor, yeah. town administrator, that's and we, mayor. That's why we always phrase it. So then I would ask the question, let's hypothetically say, Mayor Pat, that you want to take a class. Who, aside from the town administrator, approves your class? Dana. She decides. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean. Uh, good point. If I take a class that's unjustified, president. I'm sure it would be questioned. Council president. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it would be questioned. I don't know. Yeah. You just. They would. You would have to. Uh, well, you're making a council president more than a council mem. I. And you're a little outside of the charter. I would be careful. That's why I'm comfortable leaving it with the town administrator because it applies to well, everyone. everything says this town administrator is, and this mayor. Is actually, a council policy, right? Well, yeah. Council no, it's for mayor. mayor. Yeah, but the overall, the overall budget, mayor. Once you all approve it, I can tweak it. Well, that's true because we've got internal controls. I mean, he could approve himself, but then we still need the administrator to approve it. So I think we're okay. Which well, true too. Charlene doesn't let anything go by. She'll well, get you. Well, then you know the ultimate exactly. Uh, okay. So we'll uh, we'll add that and then. Um, can we just sure bring this back next month and sit on? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Place. I'm gonna. Uh, I I do have concerns. Okay. With this. And it's due to the approval of who approved the classes and everything else okay. and potential use for abuse sure. and persuasion. No problem. So I would just put a pin in this and wait till next month to we're gonna, bring we're it back up. We're going to do September. So or I September. Make, I can make corrections. Okay. Um, let you guys, I'll, I'll send out the final version and then we can bring it back in September. Thank you everyone for your feedback and I appreciate it. We will now move into commission appointments and reappointments. You have, Ooh, oh my God. <laughs> um, just for minute uh, note taking the word July at the top is misspelled uh, July, 2021 commission <laughs> reappointments. Um, and it is. So the mayor. Okay. I'm ready. Go for it. For the July town council meeting, I am proposing to the town council that Joshua Timberman be reappointed to economic development. I think it's Josiah. Josiah. Him too, him and his brother. <laughs> uh, uh, also, uh, Tom Neff, thank you guys. Tom Neff, Mike Dixon, and Kenneth Humble be reappointed to the Mount Airy Sustainability Commission and Rachel Price be reappointed to the Ethics Commission as an alternative. Council, what is your view? And we also have two, we have two new ones. new ones. Did you want to read those? Oh, where, who? Um, we have Caroline, Caroline and Zachary. Okay, I have not reviewed them. Where are they going? That's for Streets and Roads, Zachary Fanning and Carolyn Langeel. Let's get them on there because I got to tell you, Streets and roads. Is yeah, we desperate. um we had an email from was it Holly or Colleen? I mean, I read it, but I didn't yeah. study. I wasn't ready for it. But with Carolyn and the other guy, and given the fact, uh, that Zachary streets, Fanning and Carolyn Langeel for streets and roads. Are you are you approving that? And yes. The, and did your commission? Yeah, it's yes. your commission. And our chairperson so okay. did also. Your chairperson approved okay. it. Yes. Mary Beth I also recommend that to the town council. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Councilwoman Galetti and Mr. Mayor. We appreciate it. Um, so we have uh, Josiah going to EDC, Tom Neff, Mike Dixon, and Ken Humble going to sustainability, and Rachel Price going to ethics, as well as a recommendation for Zachary and Carolyn to go to streets and roads. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Cool. You know, Zach works on Howard County Department of Highway. He does, Highway. DPW. You're welcome. It's really good. Uh, Jason, can I go with <laughs> yeah. my report? Are we ready? Yes, sir. It is your report time. Try to blow through this. Okay. Well, we had a great July American Spirit weekend. What a beautiful tribute to our country and our community. I want to thank everybody who took part in the Mayor's Parade. And most importantly, the staff that put it together. You know, those things, we come up with ideas, but then the staff goes through all the motions, they set it up, they time it, so thank them so much. And to the fire department that took part in this. Uh, let me see, Main Street activities, grounds, and we had a great uh, July 3rd. I'd like to thank uh, Denise Fox, 
uh, Ben Galecki and uh, Chris Coleman for starting this. Uh, actually, we all met at a table about eight years ago and they're still making it happen. It was the first one I missed and you did a great job, Jason. Thank you. I'll be missing a few more. I'd like to see other people participate a little bit more. Uh, the town council uh, has rightfully lowered the messenger budget. I'm not gonna go into detail on these things because they'll be in, in, uh, in the paper. Uh, retail signing relaxing will continue for a while, but not forever and definitely not for town Definitely not for businesses that aren't in town. So if you see Joe Smoes from Damascus sitting on one of our sidewalks, does not belong there. Chief, make sure Matt gets that picked up. Only town people can do this uh, little stretch. Municipal planning. I uh, just wanted to share some lessons that I learned. This is about classes and reimbursements. My first class that I really learned something was called curb grinding. We were going through hell sorry for my left arm we would bust out a curb that was low well there's a new way to grind it where you don't bust it and we start doing that and i got that in mml uh another role another things that that i found out uh from the conference well first communication face to face is important because when enemies are talking they are not fighting remember everybody will find a special finger in a car but if you're face to face, that finger goes away. So face to face. Second, getting together with state leaders to ensure that we are part of the process. That is a huge reason for us to be in MML. I think Lynn was around uh, most of the state leaders. I know you all were, you all made your exposure, but it's important for them to know who we are and what's out there to improve our town. Uh, third, is to see the vendors and the equipment, like the curb grinder, what vendors are out there. Very few vendors were there this year. I must say they were mostly state programs because the attendance was so low. But getting to see the vendors, see what's available to help our towns. So those are things that I learned this year from the conference. Uh, let me see what's happening. I'm just gonna hit the topics. Maryland Rails to Trails is anticipated to close from August to January. Construction is progressing on Chick-fil-A. The uh, comprehensive master plan for 2003 is coming up. A lot of things look forward to the two this month. Sky is the limit. It's coming up July 18th, 2.30 to 4.30. Uh, what else is going on here? Uh, who is on the job? There's a job fair coming to town. It's gonna to be at the Plumery Home parking lot. Uh, taste of the Mount Airy fire department well they're going to have another one of their cookouts on 23rd 28th 29th 30th 50th watkins play place uh evening of inclusion is coming pam is that our your playground popping yes okay so that's happening there's a cook-off restaurant competition woo that'll be fun the police department will be hosting the third night out so that'll be fun uh, we're going to have a concert series in Wildwood Park. It's coming back. Love it. Uh, join us at Watkins Park for camp night starting at 5 p.m. for music. That's August 14th. Uh, Celebrate Mount Airy will be held on the 28th. Get look out for that. Down, come downtown every fourth Sunday for cars and coffee up on the lot. It's a really cool show, especially when you own a 62 E100 the way that I do. Uh, Bank Brews is at the Simpson Ballast Park, a Simpson Baker Ballast Park, uh, on late Sunday every month, hosted by Avis T21 Foundation. They've had some weather problems, but when that weather's not, that's a heck of a place to have a party, I gotta tell you. Uh, my Community Forum will be held at Simpson Baker Park Saturday, August 7th from 10 to 11. Volunteer opportunities are still around there. Contact Colleen. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We will uh, move into uh, Commission Liaison's report, and we'll start with uh, Councilwoman Reed with Board of Parks and Rec. Uh, so the Recreation and Parks Commission met on Thursday, June 17th. We met via Zoom. Um, our next meeting is July 15th, this Thursday, which will also be virtual. 
Um, a couple announcements. The Rails to Trails, uh, the, the trail connecting Watkins Park and Main Street, will be closed from mid-August to January for the construction of our Mount Airy Old Mainline Central Branch Trail Project. Um, the, the board actually has two commission members whose um, time is expiring on August 1st. I believe one of those commission members intends to stay on the board. There will potentially be one vacant spot, um, so stay tuned for that. Vandalism um, apparently has been an issue at some of our parks lately. Uh, very specifically, Prospect Park, Summit Ridge Soccer Field, um, they, they've had some issues with ATVs riding on those soccer fields, leaving large divots in the field, making them unusable. Um, at Watkins Park, there were some broken light posts at the basketball sh uh, court, which shattered the protective lenses. Um, so let's keep an eye out, and if you see anything suspicious, contact Chief Doug. <laughs> um, the AED equipment at Watkins Park is up and running. Town staff and Mike Regal, the chair of the Rex and Park Commission, uh, are performing bi-monthly checks on that equipment to make sure it's operable. Um, at the last meeting, the commission approved $5,500 for the Windy Ridge Mountain Bike Trail to start the design work. Um, we did notify the Ellis's, um, so they, they are moving forward with that project. Uh, at Summit Ridge, the hazardous equipment has been removed. Um, but no solid plan has been set to, to, to replace it, um, either replace the, the equipment or potentially replace the playground. Um, so I, the commission will talk more about that and I'll update you as soon as possible. Uh, camp night is August 14th. Watkins Play Place evening of inclusion is July 31st. And a correction to the mayor's report, Bank Bruise is actually on hold um, until after Oktoberfest, after the inclusive event at the playground. I have to switch gears to Oktoberfest, so my time is a little bit limited. Um, so we're going to put Bank Brews on hold um, and probably pick it back up in the fall. Uh, and that concludes my report. Awesome. Thank you. Um, we will now move to EDC and Planning Commission, Council Member Munder. All right. The EDC meeting was held. Oh, let me turn this mic on. Uh, <laughs> that would help. Uh, okay. The EDC meeting was held July excuse me, not July, June 23rd at 7 p.m. Uh, we basically just had an update from MAMS event and from Alice Ranskin. Uh, we d Old Business was Welcome Wagon, an update on Welcome Wagon from Ray, what is Ray's last name? Miller. Miller, thank you, and Donna Marie Needle. That is a program that is being reinstituted to offer little packages for new residents in here in town. Councilwoman Reed gave us an update on the brand ambassador program, I believe. Um, we went over the Envision Mount Airy tour in September 2021 that's coming up, which will be in the morning a little bit different. So please stay tuned on to the town webpage for more updates on the Envision Mount Airy tour. That is a tour for, sorry, I'm repeating, but I'm <laughs> giving more information as I'm thinking. Uh, to uh, show businesses the available space and what Mount Airy has to offer. Um, we spent most of our time going over the building a, a brighter future and small business grant program. Uh, we should have a final version to review at this month's meeting and have it brought before council hopefully during the August meeting. Uh, the next Meeting is July 28th, 2021 at 7 p.m., I believe, here in Town Hall. Planning meeting will be a little, the update will be a little bit shorter since I was down at MML, so I was not able to attend the meeting personally. It was held virtually on June 28th at 7 p.m. Two items were discussed. It was a site plan, S20-0001, Twin Arch Business Plan. Park Section 3, Lot 32 was up for a final, final site development plan and, then, and it was approved. And a text, a proposed text amendment, Ordinance 2021 16. Nope, excuse me, sorry. I left my glasses at home too, so I'm kind of winging it. <laughs> Ordinance 2021 17 was proposed text changes for the zoning map amendments, and that was approved, I believe. 
was that the right number? Thank you, John. Uh, that dealt with um, having things um, properly situated in MXD zones and, and community commercial. Next planning commission meeting is July 26, 2021. So that concludes that report. Sorry for the confusion a little bit. Uh, the couple things that I took away from MML was one had to deal, deal with government operations, particularly a town should be offering the proper pay and benefits for police and, and all town employees to avoid what is going to start happening real soon, which was called the revolving door of employees. So I would like to see if the council can give voice authorization tonight for the town administrator and police chief to start developing a plan for step increases and a proper functioning personnel system within the, the town government to offer, you know, just see what's out there, see if we're on board with other municipalities so we can have proper step and employee retention pro programs, advancement opportunities, because even during the opening ceremony for new, I want to say, elected officials, another town employee said, Another town, say councilman or administrator asked, brought up the question, well, what do we do? We're, we're losing people, how do we keep them? No, no one's coming up in the pipeline for like public works and other things. And the answer was steal them from other, other municipalities. So it will be, if that starts happening and we allow it to happen, it will be the race to the bottom for the employees and the police force. And we can't, we should not allow that to happen. So I would like to see if we can give them authorization to start looking, because that is under the charter ability for the council to um, set up some type of personnel system. Just to see, and see what happens. I think we probably already do something like that when we do our budget cycles and checking employees and raises and things like that. No. No, no. I, I just, can I make a comment? Because yeah. I 100,000% I agree. I've said this for the last couple of years. Federal agencies, state agencies have step increases. Yeah. So if our employees get positive um, evaluations on an annual basis, they have that attainability of going to the next step. So I've always questioned why don't we have it at our level, and that is something we learned at MML, yeah. that some towns do okay. have it. And like you said, they, they steal them. And we, yeah. we've got a phenomenal, amazing staff. We need to look at what we can do to keep them. So I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Okay. So that's one of the things about It's, government. it's just something that we always hear when we come to say, hey, do we investigate what a typical yeah. pay is and is this within that range? I, I know that we, it's not a formalized process, yeah. which is probably what. Um, Much more formal, because yeah, yeah. unfortunately we're no longer a town staff of five or 10, we're 40 plus, right. and we're gonna get larger probably as time goes by. So it's better to be ahead of the game than behind yeah. the game and then struggling for employees like many companies are now okay. and services will suffer. So I guess, I'm not sure, can I just make a motion? I mean, I, could, mean I, know, I, I think it's just a, uh, you know, we just say, yeah, we just give you approval. I don't think it's okay. a, a, right, because that, that also uh, a vote or anything like that. And not reactive. If sure. Are. And it also tells, again, it's at the federal and state level, why don't we have something yeah, that's simple? Or so look I, into it. At, let them look into yeah, it. Yeah, I think get that's the information okay. Yeah. For us. I don't have I any think, problem. Nothing. I think they're the most capable ones to be able to look at other um, police departments, other towns, and what, and, and not even just other towns. Yeah. What do they have at the state level, as you know? Yeah. What do they have at the federal level, as Steve and I both know? Yeah. That we can do here to retain our employees yeah. and to that's give fine. them the incentive to, and to be able to afford to live in Mount Airy. Some yeah. of them can't, which is really kind of sad. So. I, I would say yes if we're asking for a yes or no. Yeah. yeah. Yes, no. Maybe so. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I, I totally support this 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think our employees are not compensated according to what is kind of standard to our surrounding areas. Um, yeah. So I would be interested in seeing those numbers, yeah. um, especially our police force. Um, I think our guys are probably overworked and underpaid. So. I'm a yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I'm a yes. Yes. I'm, I'm agreeing to move forward and lo look into it and see what information's out there. Yeah, that's all I'm asking. I think, I think that's do that. Yep. Yeah, Perfect. nothing, sir. All right. And the other one goes into what Council President Poirier has been saying and indicating the proper communication by town staff and elected officials. 
Um, I was in a class I was presented by how to deal with the media and stuff. And unfortunately, in today's community, we do need a professional, either contract agency that deals with communications or a person sta on staff that solely deals with communications, particularly the realm of the internet, Facebook, and everything else. So I'm not sure if we can do this or not, or just maybe also have the town administrator maybe look into, or I can look into how much it would cost to contract out some of those communication services, just to get a rough idea to see. Well, I think if you can talk to the town administrator with the information you got, yeah, um, I would like to see the town administrator be able to look into getting a communications person for the town, because it wouldn't yeah. just be social media, it would be any kind of communications, because I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, we have a lot of staff members who are doing all these different parts of communications, if it could be put with one person. Yeah. Um, I would love to be able to tell the town administrator, look into that, compared to, obviously, we're going to be fiscally responsible, compared to having a person on staff versus what you learned at MML. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I would say, I would pass along the information yeah. to the lady that presented it. It's a well a lot of good information. that does uh, work and communications for La Plata. So I can pass that name along to the town, to David, and just see if you can look into it and just see how much, you know, what services they offer. Does La Plata like them? And go from there, because we do need help, and it will help us with the digital age. So I, I honestly feel that one person should be responsible for yeah. all external communications. Um, yeah. Whether it's someone on town staff or a third party company. So, yeah. yeah. Thank you. I'm not using the correct terms, but third party company <laughs> or a contractor. Okay. The third one, I oh, know I'm taking it long, sorry, it's getting late, is inclusivity. I believe Councilwoman Galetti can think I thought I was going to get killed in the uh, <laughs> class. I talk about it when I ask a, a question on it. And at what point does it become a concern issue or when do we need to move it up to a, a top of the list and what was told to me there is no such thing we need to do it no matter what so i know this town staff does an excellent job at it and sometimes we might not hit the mark all the time so i would like to put a, a challenge out there to people like if you see us doing something or advertising events or doing something and you don't feel included with it no matter who you are or are, just let us know. And it might just be as simple as we never thought about it before on doing something. So please let us know if we're not fulfilling your thoughts of what the government needs to be for you in Mount Airy, particularly towards inclusion of make sure, because I want everyone that lives here to feel like they belong here and to be happy here. So that's what I learned at MML this year. So. I can, can I just add to that, um, Councilman Munder? I think one of the biggest things we learned was people, we want them to know they're being heard. Yes. I think that was the last thing you were yes. talking about. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. We'll move to Recycling and Sanitation Commission, Councilmember DeMotor. All right. Thank you. So the Recycling and Sanitation Commission held its shredding and battery collection event on June 12th. The shredding event was very popular and successful. Um, we said we'd be accepting paper until the truck is full, and the shredding truck was full by around 10.30 in the morning. We collected over 10,000 pounds of paper and over 1,200 pounds of batteries. Um, there was a very high turnout. It did include people from outside of Mount Airy with large quantities of paper that they were bringing. Um, the, the, the memorable quote from the morning for me was, you all are more popular than Chick-fil-A today. And it, it really was true. The line was backed up all the way out to uh, Route 27. So, so we have some lessons learned about um, how to run the event in the future. And we're going to be discussing that at our next uh, commission meeting. Um, our next meeting will be a town hall at 7 p.m. on July 21st. And then a separate item, the next yard waste pickup is scheduled for July 24th. Um, as an intro into my learnings from MML, um, I brought this up a little earlier in the meeting, but 
Um, I made a commitment when I ran for town council and during my campaign and in listening to a lot of folks across Mount Airy, uh, I made a commitment to address the needs and concerns of our citizens. And one of the issues of major concern that they communicated to us is the needing urgent action and attention on traffic safety on Main Street. And so part of my focus as a council member, I am going to commit that I'm going to serve as an advocate for safe streets in general across Mount Airy, but specifically be an advocate for Main Street. And when I say Main Street, I don't mean just downtown. I mean all of Main Street from south to north. Um, I think our residents on Main Street who live there deserve the same sense of safety and serenity that others who enjoy this in other neighborhoods in Mount Airy. Um, and so, getting into my learnings from MML, to me, one of the most important things I learned was being able to network with other town uh, elected officials from other municipalities in Maryland. So, spent a lot of time networking, talked to people, council members from La Plata and Boonesboro, to name two, on the topic of Main Street safety and some of their challenges, and we exchanged ideas on that. I also attended the exhibits and I spoke with a lot of the vendors and the other agency representatives were there. So I spent a lot of time talking with representatives from Maryland Department of Transportation's MVA and also State Highway Administration on Main Street safety and education and enforcement. And I also networked with some of the companies there, the vendors that were offering traffic safety solutions. Um, lastly, on this topic, um, and I've spoken to the mayor about this and some council members, and respecting our town structure, I'm going to first, on this topic of Main Street safety, work through the appropriate commissions. And so I've been uh, speaking with Council Member Galetti, and she has graciously um, worked with the commission to get me on their next agenda at the end of July, where I'll be sharing some of my insights about what the issues are and some ideas I have for a safety initiative. The last thing um, that I learned as a takeaway, again, talking with other municipality reps, was how to deal with developers, how to deal with the topic of growth and development in your town. And the main takeaway I got from those other town council members was that as council members, we have an allegiance to serve our citizens and not the developers. And so it's important not to be getting out of the gate and making concessions or giveaways with developers. Um, there's always a way to work things out to get what you want to see happen for the town in terms of growth and development. Last item, I attended an Eagle ceremony for Connor Canaan of Troop 829. And he has earned, in addition to his eagle rank, several eagle palms. And so the significance there is um, about 4% of all scouts achieve the eagle rank. And then to achieve an eagle palm, you need to earn five additional merit badges to get a palm. And he has several. And so the statistics are of eagle scouts, only 4% of them have earned Eagle Palms. So shout out to Connor Kinane. He's another good example of uh, the youth in our town. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll move to Streets and Roads Commission and Beautification Commission, Councilwoman Galetti. Um, what I'd like to do so I won't forget is the takeaways from MML because we were tasked to come back to talk about some of the things we learned and why it's beneficial to have us there. So. One of the number one is was great networking with officials from other towns, officials from the state, and officials from the governor's office. And it's a great way to find out what has worked with these other towns and what has not worked. New ideas, new strategies, as the other council members have said. Specifically, because I am um, the liaison to streets and roads, I I touched base with base with and spoke with people from Newmarket. And Manchester, they've recently acquired their Main Street from State Highway. So um, with pros and cons of that, 
the vendor who was working with New Market on their Main Street safety issues and actually someone in Frederick because they have an initiative on road safety in Frederick like Montgomery County does. Um, the classes were enlightening and educational and I was able to do some town promoting as the other members have said. We get to meet mayors and council members from other municipalities and a lot of them have a lot of the same issues we do and it's kind of like don't reinvent the wheel. We can learn from them and educate ourselves and they were interested actually in some of the great things we've done in Mount Airy like our hometown hero banners and the pop-up park. So there's a lot of things unique that we've done that other municipalities were interested in learning. So it was great networking and a great educational opportunity. Beautification. I don't know what else to say about them. They are working around town all the time. Um, met on June 15th, Walmart donates mulch plant flowers. They get a lot of donations. They work on grants to get a lot of what's paid for. If you go around town and look at any park, you're going to see that they mulch, they plant, they weed, they clean up the gardens all around town, the signs going into the parks. They clean those up. They've either got them cleaned up, weeded, mulched, or in the process of planting flowers. You'll see them any morning out there with pallets of flowers. Mm -hmm. um, they weed and clean up every park. The buntings at Wildwood Park, they get those up for the 4th of July celebration. Uh, they do have one member that goes around to all the parks and puts flags in the parks. So you really see, right? Mm -hmm. It's amazing what they do. I can't say enough about them. Um, Wildwood Park. Oh, first, let me back up. Ashley was able to get a grant for Windy Ridge for tree planting. So again, we have staff working with these commissions, doing a great job getting grants that are out there to beautify the parks. Wildwood, I don't even know what else to say about that. Um, there's a new water feature. I wouldn't even say water fountain because it's a work of art. You really need to check this out. Beautification talked about it and I really wasn't paying that much attention because I was like, oh, it's a fountain until I saw the pictures out here. And I've actually had citizens send me pictures already with their kids. So you need to go check this water feature out over at Wildwood Park. And thank you to Brian Johnson and our town staff because Brian Johnson, there was no plan for this, right? It was in his head. And he kept saying, it's in my head, it's in my head. And our town administrator was like, do you have plans? And he's like, it's in my head. And he designed that whole thing start to finish. You've got to check it out. So again, tying in with why we need to retain our staff. Yes. Um, there will not be a July meeting, meeting again Tuesday, August 17th here at Town Hall at 7 o'clock. Streets and Roads meets every two months, so our next meeting is Thursday, July 29th at 6.30 via Zoom because we have several members that thought we'd still be Zoom. So it will be via Zoom, and we will resume Town Hall at our September meeting. Um, some general Streets and Roads information, because I'm not going to sit here and tell you we had a complaint at this intersection, at this place. This is all on Streets and Roads. And you can go to our minutes all on the web, town website or, or up to date. But in general, traffic studies, which I said earlier, are being done on a rotating basis. The machines are always out collecting the data informa information. We collect it, populate it, look at the state guidelines of what can and can't be done as far as how can we address the continual issue of speeding in this town and road safety. We work with the chief. We pass the information on to the chief. We talk to staff on a constant basis to try to, you know, see what can be done. So what I did also find out, another takeaway from MML is, this is not unique to Mount Airy. This is an issue in every town. They all have speeding issues. They all have safety issues. Um, again, there's state guidelines of what we can and cannot do as a commission, as all commissions. We can make recommendations to staff. We can't tell them what to do. We rely on their expertise, because that's why we have phenomenal staff we do. So um, if you want more details, watch and start attending the Streets and Roads meetings. Everyone's welcome. Um, I, I do want to quickly address speed bumps, because we get constant requests for speed bumps. Yes, that's one of the things we can look at when addressing speeding. However, we cannot put speed bumps and humps on every road in town. And one thing I did just learn from staff, because we just had a request for one over, I will bring it up, Backacre. That's an industrial area, and if I'm not mistaken, we can't put humps, bumps in industrial areas. So if you want more details on streets and roads, attend the meetings, um, start getting involved. Um, but we do look at every question, comment, complaint, inquiry. So if anyone wants more details, come to our meetings. I would like to stress, submit questions, comments, et cetera, on the streets and roads button. Go to the town website, go to streets and roads, hit our button, because a lot of the requests are coming through staff, so it might get missed in our meeting. 
And the last thing I was asked to speak on actually by the mayor was, um, I was recently appointed to the newly formed Frederick County Domestic Violence Coordinating Council by um, County Executive Jan Gardner. We had our first meeting last week. Just to make people aware, it's a multidisciplinary group of different local county agencies, nonprofit, and the judiciary collaborate to promote and facilitate an effective community-wide response to domestic violence in Frederick County. It's a new mechanism to increase awareness, prevention, and create policies and programs that will eventually save lives. So when I got on this, when I was appointed, I was appointed as the citizen that's on this commission. So when I told them at our meeting I was recently elected town council, they were thrilled to have the input from a local level. So that'll be meeting monthly. That's end of my report. Thank I you promise. very much. I promise. <laughs> You're good, you're good. All right, next up is Water and Sewer and Mount Airy Sustainability Commission, and that is myself. We did not have a Water and Sewer uh, meeting in July. That next meeting is August 4th, 7 p.m. here in Town Hall. Um, because of that same month, it was an off month. I had no report from sustainability, so my reports were right on. Um, from MML, uh, attended a couple classes. The first one was um, highlighting employment issues. And the second one um, was a review for structure of government and just taking a look at the different levels uh, between the council and the mayor and how all of those are impacted. Um, I was also busy at MML uh, volunteering at the welcoming desk and um, meeting um, council members and mayors from all over. Um, I also had an opportunity to run for a position at member at large. However, I was not voted in, so I am not a member at large at MML. Sad face. <laughs> I'm busy enough as it is. My wife is saying, thank you. Um, all right, that is it. Um, we received town administrator report from David. Um, town attorney report, Tom. Uh, just uh, on CSX, which we'll talk about in closed, uh, the wireless ordinance, obviously. Um, and uh, just general advice. Uh, Thank you very much. We also received our code enforcement report. Uh, you got two months back order, and then you also got this month as well. Um, we will be receiving a zoning administrator report. Um, as Tom mentioned, we will have a closed meeting. Um, this is to consider the acquisition of real property for a public purpose and matters directly related there to CSX and rails to trails. After the closed meeting, we will adjourn, and I need to do a roll call vote for this. Councilman Demoter. Yes. Council Member Munder. Uh, yes. I'm an I as well. Councilwoman Reed. Aye. Councilwoman Galati. Aye. Perfect. So at the conclusion of our closed meeting, we will be adjourned. Thank you, everyone, for your time. Have a great evening. <laughs>